From coast to coast, live via satellite, it's time to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world, covering over 500 million souls with the good news of new life in Jesus Christ. Now, from Southern California, we invite you to be a part of the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. Joining us on Praise the Lord Car, internationally known crusade evangelists and television personalities, Dr. Jack and Rexella Benenzi. We're renowned evangelist and host of Becoming Armed and Dangerous, Mario Perillo. In the street of music, nationally known and highly acclaimed, the Herald Quartet. We you take your calls, prayer partners around America. Now your host, president and founders of the Trinity Broadcasting Network, Paul and Jay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come right on in. It's time to praise the Lord. In spite of all that Satan throws at us, in spite of the world coming down around our ears, though the earth be removed, the scripture says, I will not fear. As I've said so many times, this Christian bunch is the weirdest bunch in the whole wide world. The worse the newspaper headlines get, the happier we get. We know that our redemption draweth nigh is even at the doors. Did you know one of the TV stations up in t Seattle, Tacoma area, did a, a, a fabulous little news story on the Middle East, and they picked up a little piece of praise the Lord here and some other people talking about what's happening and is what's happening over in the Middle East tied to Bible prophecy. Partners, fasten your spiritual seat belts. I'm kidding you not. We've got some news tonight that is remarkable to say the least. Jesus Christ is coming very soon. I say that with more assurance and more fervor and more zeal and more everything than I've ever said it before in my entire life. Oh, Lord, Rex, uh, Rexella and Jack Van Impey are here tonight, and they're going to help us get into that. Mario Marillo will be along a little later to preach, and the Herald's Quartet is here to sing. And I have got my favorite job right now. Do you know what? We stand right about on this spot twice a year, only twice a year, and we say, it's time to support Christian television. Partners, will you go with me? Will you go? And I read off lists of cities and stations, and we can have them if we'll take them. We can build them if you'll just help me. If we've got the licenses. The FCC work is done. We can yeah, remember a few of those nights on Praise the Thon? Well, praise the Lord. I have the most exciting news and my favorite job of all here at TBN. Today, what is today? This is September the 6th. 6th? Yes, 1990. Today at 2.20 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, Channel 20, serving Columbus, Ohio, a major metropolitan area signed on the air. If you have neighbors, friends, loved ones up in Columbus, Ohio, Tell them Channel 20 is on the air 24 hours a day, lifting up Jesus Christ. I, can rem I actually remember reading Columbus, Ohio, as we were praying and believing, and someday we'll go to Columbus. We're there now. We're there. It's on the air, partners. You sent the money in. We ordered the equipment. We found the site. We got the FCC to say, okay, we went in. We built it. It's on the air. <sighs> Well over a hundred that Trinity owns and operates ourselves. When you count the low power, the full power, the educational, all of our affiliated stations, our foreign stations, 200 and I think 34 stations now in the entire Trinity Broadcasting Network. <laughs> to God be the glory. Great, great things he has done. And now, are you ready for this? This is historic, dear friends. Another Channel 20. I mentioned this on Behind the Scenes, but I mentioned it again. Serving Dawson Creek, British Columbia, Canada. 
signed on the air today at 9.30 p.m. Pacific day, a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. This is a low-power transmitter, effective radiated power of 1,270 watts, covering Dawson Creek, British Columbia, Canada. Our first very... <laughs> that we really sponsored and, and, and helped build. This is an affiliate station. Now, because of Canadian law, Trinity cannot directly own the station. But we furnish the equipment, and we have some wonderful Christian friends up there. And affiliate stations are going to start popping on the air up in Canada, as well as across the United States and other parts of the world. So I knew you'd want to hear that. You had a little scripture about to read to me there, honey. Why don't you get ready to do that? Come on, Harold's Quartet. Uh, Jack and Rexella, come and join me here. Mario, do I see you over there too? Come on. He's a little late for cameos, but we'll cameo him right now. Let's have prayer. Let's believe God for a mighty move of his Holy Spirit. And, and we're going to have a wonderful time looking into God's Word and seeing how what's happening over in the Middle East fits in to these awesome things that we are reading in the papers that's happening in Iraq and Iran and other parts. Hello, Rexella. How are you, darling? God bless you. Hello, Jack. Jesus hasn't come. I, I walked in and I saw Jack and Rex. I said, well, the Lord hasn't come yet. At least you're still here. I said, Jan's gone. You and I are left behind, brother. <laughs> <laughs> to go through the, the tribulation, not me. I'm going with the first load, as everybody said. Hello, Mario Marillo. How you doing, brother? I'm excited, brother. I'm excited. I'm two days away from starting a crusade in downtown San Francisco. Oh, you're back yeah, to Frisco. Yes, sir. It's... Uh, we're like this. We're getting uh, phone calls from uh, a lot of people in the secular community. The tent's going up the tent? in the center of the city, and uh, it's unbelievable. Have some awesome reports, so I'm excited. Go open the Word a little, preach yes, to us sir. a bit. I'm ready. It, I'm ready. You know, we didn't get to discuss it. Jack and I got so interested reading Micah chapter 4. We didn't even get to figure out who's going to be on first. It, does anybody have to catch a plane tonight? Is anybody under any time pressure? We usually have mercy on whoever has to either drive the I furthest. Have to get home by Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we'll just work that all out here in a minute. But um, what uh, what what can we do? What 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 do you want the body to do? I mean, you're going right into the you're going to beard the lion right in his own den up there and. We, we four went going to the Cow Palace this year to free up $35,000 for secular television advertising. So we're on three of the affiliate stations, network affiliate stations, with 30-second spots that have nothing whatsoever to do with church. So it's totally, I mean, they're saying things like, are you tired of murky mystics, religion with cobwebs, and new age swoons? And it, it's just like a punch in the face. And it's going on all through the day. Our phones have been ringing off the wall. People are saying, what is this for? Can we come? We're going to bring people. We have people flying from Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, Oregon, Mexico, from all over North America. They're coming to San Francisco for this meeting. And uh, we're just totally convinced it's going to spark something. I believe it's attached connected with all the turmoil in the world right now, the Middle East and everything else. God, you know, with all that's happening, and I don't profess to be an expert, but I feel birth pangs that some, a lot of things that none of us could have imagined would happen are going to happen. And San Francisco figures in very, very strongly to that. But, but beyond this, what, what, what can, other than pray, is there anything else we can actually well, do, Mario? To I, there are two things that I'm going to ask the body in San Francisco Bay Area to do. Our tent can handle just under 4,000 people. It's not a small tent. So we want them to bring their friends, start praying now. We're starting on Sunday afternoon, and uh, we're, we're believing God. We've been all through the city, and we want the entire church of Jesus to just stand against the power of Satan that's there, and he has no authority over the gospel. And with prayer from the saints of God, I believe we're going to see something really break loose. The churches last year uh, noted a very clear surge in membership, all the churches in the city after our crusade. This year, we're hoping for a massive harvest. And the pastors are very excited. So prayer 
And if you're anywhere in the Northern Cal area, please come and help us. Where, where is the tent going to be pitched? It, it's at this, uh, how's this, King and 4th Street in right. downtown San Francisco. Right. <laughs> and uh, it's wonderful that we, we've really, boy, I'm like this. I can't wait. Are you ready to just take over after we well, pray and sing a song? or Whenever do you, whenever you let me go, I'm going to preach. It's up to you, sir. Get Mario set up here right after prayer and a song or two, and we're going to have church tonight. And then after Mario lobs a few over in enemy territory, we'll do some mopping up here yes, with Jack sir. and Rex Sullivan MP, okay? Oh, this is an honor to be with them. All right. God. Praise God. One little scripture just before we pray and get into the word here. First, I want to remind you that in the last days, there will come scoffers who will do every wrong they can think of and laugh at the truth. This will be their line of argument. So Jesus promised to come back, did he? Then where is he? He'll never come. Why, as far back as anyone can remember, Everything has remained exactly as it was since the first day of creation. Am I talking to you? Maybe I am. Maybe you better listen. This is the Word of God, Second Peter 3, beginning at verse 3. They deliberately forget one fact, that God did destroy the world with a mighty flood. Long after He had made the heavens by the word of His command, and had used the waters to form the earth and surround it. And God has commanded that the earth and the heavens be stored away for a great bonfire at the judgment day, when all ungodly men will perish. But don't forget this, dear friends, that a day or a thousand years from now is like tomorrow to the Lord. He isn't really being slow about his promised return, even though it sometimes seems that way. But he is waiting for the good reason that he is not willing that anyone should perish. And he is giving more time for sinners to repent. The day of the Lord is surely coming as unexpected, unexpectedly as a thief. And then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise. And the heavenly bodies will disappear in fire. And the earth and everything on it will be burned up. And so since everything around us is going to melt away with holy, godly lives we should be living, you should look forward to that day and hurry it along. The day when God will set the heavens on fire and the heavenly bodies will melt and disappear in flames. But we are looking forward to God's promise for a new heaven and a new earth afterwards when there will be only goodness. Dear friends, while you were waiting for these things to happen and for Jesus to come, try hard to live without sinning and be at peace with everyone so that he will be pleased with you when he returns. And remember again why he is waiting. He is giving us time to get his message of salvation out to others that is why and you know I just picked up two letters honey in the mail as I came in tonight two reasons why Jesus didn't come yesterday or the day before one is Floyd from Santa Fe New Mexico on death row in prison there 28 years old called in and found Jesus Christ as his personal Savior, yeah. watching TBN. Precious Mary from Princeton, Illinois. And I could read a thousand letters like this one, but I just happened to pick hers up. 
I am now born again because of TBN. God has pulled me through drugs, alcohol, sexual, physical, emotional crisis, and abuse. My children have been saved also. My son recently turned from Satanism and alcohol abuse through the precious blood of our Jesus Christ. We have all given our lives within days of each other to Jesus. And it all began with him watching TBN. And that's why the Lord is waiting. He may be waiting just for you. And you're watching tonight. And you're wonderful. And TBN may have been planned through the ages just so you could find Jesus tonight. I believe that. And I believe you will. And I love you. Did you ever stop to think that that last soul that will be one is very, I believe is, alive on planet earth tonight? I really do. God knows who he or she is. He knows where. He knows the time of that last decision. How would you like to be the last soul that makes it? I mean, whew, That'd be close, wouldn't it? That'd be too close to call. I mean, Adam and this person, whoever it is, <laughs> will have to meet in heaven someday. The first and the last. Mm. That last soul could be viewing this program tonight. Mario, your message might be the, the means of bringing that last one. To, I don't know. We don't know the day nor the hour. But I'll tell you one thing. Deep in my spirit, I know more surely than I've ever known in my entire life that we are living these last final few milliseconds of time before Jesus Christ returns in power and great glory. I have never seen the scoffers so active. Jan, you couldn't have read a more perfect scripture for what Jack Van Impey is going to share with us in just a moment. The Holy Spirit is already at work and has planned this, this service tonight. It's happening, folks. We are living Bible prophecy tonight. We are fulfilling Bible prophecy tonight. I think we should pray, but is this a special urgent need that has just come in before we pray? Yes, as we pray, let's just remember uh, someone... Brenda, she's in a coma on a life support system right now, and the doctors say they'll have to, well, unplug the machine tonight if she doesn't change now. And they're just praying for her. A whole family and a whole church is praying for her and want us to join. Brenda from, um, I don't know the town, just Brenda. Okay, God knows where she is. Bloomington, Indiana. Mm -hmm. Partners, let's agree right now. Let's believe and let's work and let's pray and let's sing, gentlemen. Let's preach as though this were our last Praise the Lord program. Let's agree. Father, in that holy name of Jesus, demons have to tremble and bow at the name of Jesus Christ. Christ, the Son of the living God. And in that name we come tonight to lift Him high. The world may see His beauty and know that He is their Savior too. Holy Spirit, do Your precious work tonight in the hearts of the people who hear. Beyond that, cause those, Lord, as we've prayed so often that even we're not intending to tune by tonight. God, captivate them, capture them, cause them by some means to tune by and be, and be stopped in their tracks, Lord, that they might hear the message of Jesus Christ. Lord, these are awesome days, days that strike fear and terror in the hearts of many people. In fact, Lord, in your word, you said there'd come a time when men's hearts would fail them for fear. 
and for the fearful things that were coming upon the earth. Lord, we just agree right now that you will draw men and women, boys and girls, to the foot of your cross tonight and that they shall be saved. Use each one of us tonight, Lord, as we yield our members to you again. Make us a great soul-winning team again tonight, bringing the lost into the fold of safety before the storm clouds break upon the earth. We agree on this. We thank you for it, Lord. Let signs and wonders and miracles, God, we agree for little Brenda right now. In Jesus' name, oh, thou great physician, walk even now as we agree into that hospital room and do a miracle, Lord. Touch her. We agree on this right now. In Jesus' name and all the others tonight who are suffering and hurting in body, Lord, heal them by your mighty power, for it is your will and your nature and your joy to heal suffering humanity. Lord, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the troubled situation in the Middle East. But Lord, in the midst of it all, we cry with John the Revelator, even so come, Lord Jesus, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This we pray and ask in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. And all the church said, Amen. Amen. Well, you couldn't start a program like this with a better song, gentlemen. <laughs> this is what the world needs to hear. He's got everything under control. Come on, welcome the Herald's Quartet as they bless us tonight. Get your Bibles out. Mario's going to open the way.
my lord. This was freely given, and I found that he always kept his word. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. And it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. Yes, it's mine. And the white robe angels sing the story. A sinner has come home. Has come home. Sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to go. In the book tis written, saved by grace, oh, the joy that came to my soul. Now I am forgiven, and I know. that last note oh, pianist my. what was, was that? that low a low a good whoa oh. was he a little bit sharp i don't no. know no 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 just kidding oh. just kidding <laughs> hey the heralds have a beautiful new cd out of course albums and all kinds of things and if you want to get in touch with them we'll have an address on the screen in just a minute but did you know what i heard and learned about the heralds quartet what is that not only have they been in prison recently, <laughs> ministering, of course, but they sing how many different languages? 27 different languages. They're going to sing a Spanish song oh. sometime tonight. Now, if I understand it correctly, you don't really understand all of those 27 languages, but you learn phonetically? Most of them you phonetically learn. You, I know some of you do speak Spanish, of course. French? But um, French? they don't do too much in French, I think. A little, a little in French. Mm -hmm. uh, they said, did, did you say Russian was a possibility? Uh, uh, Russian, okay. And uh, how about Klausa? Japanese. No, no, Japanese. Chinese, Korean. Chinese, Korean, Korean. Chinese. My goodness. Navajo. Navajo Indian. It's amazing well, that they have goodness. gone to all the work of phonetically learning mm -hmm. many of these languages and singing just as we're about to build the International Production Center in, in Dallas. Dallas, Texas area. <laughs> Dear Lord, oh I'm goodness. about to decide the Lord really does Nobody have this whole thing too. figured out. <laughs> anyway, uh, in addition to the, the beautiful new album, the CD, The Herald's The Way We Were. My goodness. Ooh, can, can you do any of these tonight? Come, come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorites. Um, in a little while, we're going home. Will you sing that for uh, Jack Van Empey here in just a minute? Don't have, Don't have that one quite ready. Okay. Yeah. Give me that old-time religion. Oh, My goodness. The Savior is waiting. I love that. Mm. More love to thee, O Christ. The Lord is coming. Are you ready? I like that. Whoa. Could you do that one? That, that would be a good altar call song. Yeah. But in addition to all of that, they have a complete cassette in Spanish. So... Our dear Hispanic friends that uh, wish you had a little more of this good ministry in your own language, here it is. There's Manny looking. And, uh, yeah, Manny, Manny Bonilla. Bonilla. Manny, you... I'll leave that here for you tonight, okay? His daddy's got thousands of albums oh. in Spanish. Yeah, but I'm sure he gets tired of hearing his own dad really? all the time, you know. Anyway. Manny's getting married. How many days, Manny? Nine days. Manny Nine Bonilla days. is getting married? Yes, he's <laughs> got to be kidding. 
I remember when they carried him in here. Yeah, my goodness, my goodness. Many of you remember Manuel Bonilla, who did Spanish Praise the Lord for many, many years here at TBN. Still does ministry all over Latin America and is a great musician. Manny and uh, and uh, his Annie sister An Annabelle have worked here for many many years and uh, you may tell you a sweet little story about Annabelle. Sure. We just got a minute. We went to uh, Puerto Rico with her dad and mom Annabelle. Did, were you there, Manny, when we went to I Puerto Rico? You didn't go no. on that trip. Well, Annie about that time was about 11 or 12 years old. Well, of course, she speaks perfect English, uh, Spanish, mm -hmm. understands, can translate, could translate because she was raised bilingual. And we were there and rented this 10,000-seat auditorium in Puerto Rico. You will love this, Mario. Mm. Oh, dear. 10,000 seats. We were going to take Puerto Rico by storm. We advertised. We did everything right. Put it in the paper, took a tour, everything there. We got there ready to win Puerto Rico, and 50 people showed up in a 10,000-seat auditorium. <laughs> now, please, let me explain a little bit. 50 people. <laughs> they had a typhoon that day that washed out a third of the island, okay? Didn't so, keep us away. Well, <laughs> as John knows where they said, they you know, I mean, it was getting closer and closer to, you know, time, and... You oh, know, and let me tell you, three oh, drifted in and, and there was balconies, you know, and I told the people that had come from America, so I said, now you go up there and you sit in that balcony corner. You sit over there, you sit over there, and you can bring people down to the yard, you know, for the altar <laughs> service. <laughs> they were oh, sitting there. Oh, boy. So finally oh, it got to be 830. There wasn't even there. We said, come on down. <laughs> <laughs> but we had church <laughs> we just as though there we were 10,000 people there. Then that's not my story. I had to tell that little part to well, tell this. Let, let me at least salvage a little something out of this. No, I was going to tell that. That then, when we when we realized that we couldn't get them to the auditorium, then we went out in the street. In the and this parks. is the story in the park. Saturday, we understood that half of Puerto Rico goes to this park. So <laughs> when we just preached to each other that night, you know, so we thought, well, we'll go to the park and witness. And Annie Bell followed me because I didn't speak English. Yeah, Spanish. <laughs> I don't speak very good English either. I just proved it. <laughs> but she followed me, and we won to the Lord down there in that part. A man that had just gotten out of prison that minute for murdering. He, he was in for murder. He had just gotten out that day, and he was going to the park, listen to this, he told us all later, to kill again, uh. to get back in prison because he didn't want to have to make it on his own outside of prison in Puerto Rico. He wanted to be back in prison. And Annabelle and I ran straight into him and won him to Jesus. Jesus. I mean, he was crying. Glory he to God. Finally, some men came over when they saw little Annabelle and me talking, and he took out a gun, he took out ni a knife, he took, yeah, I don't know I what that. all he had in the park and handed it over. But Annabelle speaking to him in Spanish and me, you know, talking to him in English and her translating, won that man to the Lord. You know, that's not all that happened down oh, there. I, I will never forget one of the most visible miracle I've ever seen in my life happened in that park. A little yeah. man that lived in the park and had been stabbed as a child mm. and his vocal cords severed you could, could not speak mm -hmm. he was kind of the park pet everybody knew him and loved him and he yeah. he kind of wandered around and panhandled and you know people just gave him what he needed to live and we gathered around him no it was a group of our little ladies little actually spanish ladies i don't think i was even no, i we was across there, the park so uh, I, I, I get none ahead. of the glory for, for this. Um, they laid hands on him, and instantly his voice was restored, Oof. and he began to speak. And Bless. everybody in the park knew it, and they were all gathering around going, you know, and they were calling him by name. I forget. They were calling, you can talk, you can talk. Say my name, say my You know, they were all... Because they knew he Isn't couldn't talk, wonderful? ever. And he had cried so much because of that miracle. He'd taken his little beanie off. He wore a little cloth beanie. And he had held it on his Oof. face and cried into it until that little beanie, he was just wringing it you out could ring tears. tears out of it. He I'm had just kidding. cried and sobbed and sobbed because of that miracle. So the Lord didn't Bless want the us Lord. 
to have a big 10,000. He wanted us out in the parks where the real hurting was. Do you see? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Place, you know, this, this hits what I'm going through so perfectly. You're, you're taking the tent right yes, down where the hurt right is. Right in the heart yeah. of the city. And that was the word I received. In fact, the name of our series this time is called Miracles in the Mainstream. Mm. Yeah. And I was reading Daniel chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and couldn't figure out the interpretation, frightened to death, calls all the New Agers in. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Says, interpret my dream. And they said, we will if you tell us what you dreamed. <laughs> and he said, no, because this time I need a real answer. <laughs> <laughs> Even not real dumb himself. Yeah, really. <laughs> he said, now, astrology helps me pick my, my mates for the weekend and mm -hmm. do this and that and the other, <laughs> but this has to do with eternity. Mm -hmm. And they all said it. It was a marvelous statement. All the magicians, sorcerers, and <laughs> all of them said, what you want, only God can give you. <laughs> for it's the Spirit of God that can reveal that and that alone. And... The thing that has frightened me so much is in the San Francisco Bay Area, there are 1.5 million people in the New Age movement right now mm -hmm. out of a population of a little over 6 million. Uh, they estimate some people believe as many <coughs> as one out of every four people up there are involved in some form of, of either astrology, reincarnation, astral projection, or occult or Satanism, something. Mm -hmm. And it's, it astounded me that the, the bubble that the people live in is that they really never need a real answer. And God said, the church has what's real. The Lord said to me, the church has what's real, but they talk about it in an unreal way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And New Age yeah. has something that's not real, mm -hmm. but they talk about it as though it were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. How do we bridge that gap? Well, here is... a. And I, the, I'm sitting there, Paul, mm -hmm. and the Lord says, miracles in the mainstream. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what does that phrase mean? And I start meditating on it. And God said, that's what you're going to call this crusade, is miracles in the mainstream. Because what you have got to discover is that when the gifts of God are insulated from human need, they lose their potency. When you deposit them in the center of where it hurts, oh. they become mighty. And nothing can stand against them. You know, it's in the Word. It's in totally Acts, in the Word. Chapter what four, five, or six? Oh, Philip went up. Yes. The people, in one accord, gave heed, seeing the miracles. Well, the that were the, done. the word mainstream kept coming again and again. What you're saying is so true. The day of Pentecost was the main holiday. God waited for the main <laughs> holiday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And literally, 120 believers sitting there in the upper room thinking, we are a, a kind of a sorry appendage, an echo, a shell on the beach of a movement that died. The Lord's gone, and we're, we're huddled here to survive. And the power of God falls. And the Bible says, as you know, flames appeared over the head. Well, you see somebody with a flame over their head... <laughs> You know, you get out of their way. <laughs> yes. You, you would and stop to look the I, second time. I started thinking about what it would look like to watch 120 people yelling as loud as they could. Because I don't believe it was kind of Vesper gargling, you know. It was real loud because you've had the Holy Ghost on you, oh, brother. Yes. yes, yes. And flames on top of your head. And you're yelling as loud as you can and the crowd comes down or they come down on the crowd because every time the Spirit of God's poured out on any generation of believers, they get poured out on the generation. Amen. God gets poured out on us. We get poured out on the problem. <laughs> and there they are in the center of town, screaming at the top of their lungs in a language that everyone could understand, speaking dialects that the people in the crowd immediately knew. Just like what you described, this man who had his throat mm -hmm. and his vocal cords severed. Everyone knew. Mm -hmm. See, Amen. God's mainstream tenacity is something. Mm -hmm. And, and to, to tell you that, and I don't want to break a confidence we might have shared, but if we come under persecution in the next couple of years, you or I or this ministry or any other, it will look like the devil is attacking us, mm -hmm. but it is God provoking the devil to attack us for another excuse 
for God to prove his power in the mainstream. Mm. That's it. To force oh. a mainstream confrontation. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. You know, God is a divine manipulator. I love the way he works. He made Peter leave his quarter on the dresser that morning when he went to pray. <laughs> just so he would have no... I believe, you know, we have this, this kind of this holy attitude about Peter. You know, it was like, here's the man at the gate beautiful, the main gate, the main time of prayer, and the main paraplegic of the city. And Everyone the loved him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the main preacher yeah. is standing there, and the man holds up his cup, and Peter goes, you know, if I give this guy money, I'm off the hook. My healing ministry can wait one more day. <laughs> and he, he pulls in his pocket and he left it on the dresser. <laughs> I see. And he, he started out, you know, I, I, I'm sorry, but I don't have any money here. <laughs> and then the power of God hit him. But what I do have, yes, yes, yes. I give you in the name of Jesus. Now, Saul of Tarsus was the main adversary of Christianity. He was kind of like the Ted Turner of the first century. Brother, yes. You know what I mean? A guy that I, I sincerely believe that Brother Ted has a kind of a backward hunger for truth. And mm -hmm. it, makes him, it makes him restless and agitated. Mm -hmm. And he comes out with statements he can't back up. Mm -hmm. Or he wished he could. Mm -hmm. And don't be surprised. Wouldn't it be some of the Holy Ghost fell on Ted Turner? Let and he be, got up. Yes. You know, the, you know, Let it be. Let it be. And uh, it's scary what God could do. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he keeps talking about wanting world peace, world peace. Mm -hmm. he's, I believe he's looking for peace. Mm -hmm. Well, an eruption of God on him. Mm -hmm. So the first sermon that I'm preaching Sunday afternoon in San Francisco is called Miracles in the Mainstream. Mm -hmm. And what I'm talking about is I'm going to sit there and say, folks, how about if you get something that actually works? <laughs> Not where you buy the book, <laughs> chant the mantra, and then convince all your friends that you are enlightened and you do feel better. <laughs> and then your marriage is still miserable. Your habits are still there. You're still hung up. Yeah. You've been out to the, to the country hospital to get over your alcoholism. You're still drunk. You're still hurt. I said, I'm going to tell you that Christianity not only is for the mainstream, it doesn't work until you're in the mainstream. Mm. What we've got is not for Sunday morning. What we've got on Sunday morning is we celebrate what God did in us yeah. on Sunday morning. Yes. But Christianity yes. begins on Monday morning when you're working for your jerk boss or your weird <laughs> relatives show up and you ought to be mad and depressed and instead the power of God wells up and helps you live your life. Mm. And I'm, I'm going to hit it and hit it and hit it. One thing I, I'm very excited about is we've already made inroads into the public schools of San Francisco, Paul, they're gonna it's let impossible. You, they're going to let you in. Six to speak. assemblies. There's a young. What I'm doing is I've got. I'm not the only evangelist preaching in San Francisco. We're bringing in five, and we're going to have things going on all over the city, and bringing it to the center of town in the tent as in the evenings. We have two meetings a day. One of the young evangelists is a young man that both of you, I believe, know. His name is Donnie Moore. Mm -hmm. He was all-American oh, yeah. quarterback from uh, <coughs> University of the Pacific. Mm -hmm. An amazing preacher, young man. And we're asking the schools to let him in. The Oakland A's have made Donnie their unofficial uh, chaplain. My okay. And he, he's very close to all of those superstars, and they love Donnie. And so we sent videos to principals in San Francisco high schools. And six of them said, we'll bring the entire student body together. And we will let Donnie speak to them, and they're, they're going to share the crusade in the public school. And that's, Im that's impossible, oh, that, brother. That is, that that's is up there awesome. with getting in the awesome. Soviet Union. Really? Oh, <laughs> it really is. It, it really is, is. It is amazing. The People's Republic of San Francisco. Yeah. So I, I do believe there is a word in the spirit right now on, uh, you know, about the mainstream. I believe that if we don't, by choice, get back in the mainstream, that the Lord's going to provoke things to force us to be there. Are you seeing any real hard evidence that it's happening? Oh, yes. Here in America? Yes. You know what I'm seeing, Paul, and when I travel? I'm seeing young pastors who are, who are erupting in, in cities, churches that are massive that you and I, I've never heard of them. I never even knew they were there. Mm-hmm. But they'll go into a city, they'll rent a high school auditorium or they'll rent a hotel ballroom yeah. and they'll start <coughs> preaching something that is just so simple and sincere. And you know what else? 
I'm seeing as, a, as, as almost a formula right now, these people you're talking about, by and large, don't come from no. a, a, an established denomination. No. They, no. They, they, they come from the streets. They Rick come Godwin. from, you know, right they're heathen. They yeah. just plain Total. old. And you know what? John I figured Wimber. something out. I, you know, John Wimber was a what? Rock and roll? Yeah, Rick Godwin. Yeah. Rick, Rick Godwin uh, was, was, did not roll. come from a yeah. religious background John at all. Wimber was the manager of the Righteous Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. A little prophetic uh, <laughs> yeah. on there by the Lord. Anyhow, what I'm seeing, though, is, is kind of mixed, Mario. Yes. Okay, yeah, I, I, I hear, and I know, I've been down there. Brazil is a flame. I mean, they're winning more people to Christ than they're outstripping the birth rate, birth rate finally. You know, Argen wow. Argentina, great move in Argentina. Chile is coming along. You know, South America, to a great extent. Europe, very spotty right now. Eastern Europe, Russia, yeah, boy, I mean, it's like revival in there, but, but Western Europe, uh-uh. No. Italy is as dead as a doornail. I've, you know, I've isn't it interesting that wherever materialism has taken a major foothold, yeah. that materialism seems to be a real, uh, you know, it isn't just the love of money and the love of possessions. It's a, an attitude that's undercurrent there that says, yeah. I don't need anybody. Mm -hmm. I did this myself. And that seems to be a spirit that just, mm -hmm. you know, really mm -hmm. hardened. San Francisco was that way. I mean, San Francisco, imagine this, 87% of the workforce there has a college degree. They buy per capita more uh, uh, technical books, paperbacks, than any city in the world. And, you know, the big thing in San Francisco is to decide where you're going to eat. I mean, that's, that was a real struggle in life. I see. And then in 78, it all started to just collapse, yeah. starting with Jim Jones and then the AIDS epidemic. And there has been death. On the, on the tip of everyone's tongue, death. Yeah. And the issue of death, isn't this something how in our society we freely talk about sex, never talk about death. Mm -hmm. When we tout that we're a very open yeah. culture, we're not. Yeah. So now the issue of death comes up and mm. it's like Nebuchadnezzar's nightmare. They really yeah. need answers. Oh, Lord. They need answers. Well, our prayer, of course, is that while we see the flames of revival spreading in many other parts, Africa yes. is ablaze. And it's spotty here. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll hear, you know, let's use Columbus, Ohio. Rod Parsley up there. Yes. A, a, a fine young man. We just signed a station on in Columbus, Ohio Bless today. Bless the Lord. So, hello, Columbus. Channel 20 is on the air. But a great church, Rod Parsley. And, and, and then I'll, you know, even um, an old established church like First Assembly, Phoenix, Arizona. A, 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 a Tommy Barnett oh, is over there just setting the woods afire, you know. So yes. it's, but it's spotty, and it there's still spotty. sections of America that... Mm. We don't have what is known as a general awakening, where what you have is a well of life here, a well of life there, mm -hmm. bonfire over there. But when it, when it connects in a wall of fire, oh in a general movement, yeah. we don't have that right now. Yeah. I, I do believe that the hardest battle I face, I rarely get to say this on TVN, the hardest battle I face is that I am an obsessed evangelist. <laughs> I would just as soon have the whole room be rank sinners than to have any saints there at all. Yeah. But I love the saints. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. I love the saints. But occasionally the Lord will force me into an arena to talk to the church and say, you know, here are a few things mm -hmm. that need to really be addressed. Yes. And, and that's, that's where I'm, I'm feeling you, right now. You did that at, at Full Gospel Men's yeah. Fellowship a, a few months ago and at, at our rally in, uh, in Denver. <coughs> I enjoyed day. that, and that so was much, great. Yeah. being in Denver. Uh, just before we sing another song, can you tell us where to get our Bibles open? What, what do you want to talk to us about tonight? Uh, you know, you brought it up, brother. You brought the chapter up that I wanted to address, and that is the third chapter of Acts. Mm. The third chapter of the book of Acts. All right. And right. then when I, when I get a chance, I'll jump on it. Great. Right. right after the song. Get your Bibles out. We're going to hear the word tonight. This is a new song to me, but it sounds most appropriate. My Lord's going to move this wicked race. 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 My right. Lord's going to move this wicked race. Amen. Interesting. Let's welcome Harold's yeah. quartet. <laughs> <laughs> That's in the word, too, yeah. My Lord's gonna move this wicked race. My Lord's this wicked race. My 
my lord. This wicked race. This wicked race. My lord. My lord's gonna move this wicked race. My lord. He's gonna race. For the race of a nation shall obey. That shall obey. Nicodemus, he desired to know. My lord. Desired to know. My lord. Desired to know. Desired to know. Nicodemus, he desired to know, my Lord, how can, how can a man be born again? Be born again? My Lord said to Moses on the mountain top, my Lord, the mountain top, my Lord, the mountain top, the mountain top. My Lord said to Moses on the mountain top, my Lord. Gonna stamp, gonna stamp his law on Moses' heart, on Moses' heart. My Lord's gonna move this wicked race. My Lord, this wicked race. My Lord, this wicked race. This wicked race. My Lord, my Lord's gonna move this wicked race. My Lord's gonna race. Thank God for that song and for the opportunity we have to speak in behalf of the power and the grace of Jesus. Whenever I began to preach in Berkeley at the time in 1969, which I'm going to tell you, I was real young then. <laughs> the, the most crucial time was hoping the crowd would not erupt into a riot and to understand the agitation that was in the air every time you had a meeting. You'd begin with prayer, and that prayer meant something. For me, I've never, ever believed that you just stand up there and just kind of through a, a ritual say, Oh, Lord, bless this sermon and do something special. At that point, it was like I had to hang my whole life on God and say, Please, give these people enough calmness of spirit to at least listen to a few minutes of what I have to say. I believe that it is not a cliche, it is not a standard statement to stand here and look at you and say, God arranged it for you to hear the next few minutes of what I'm going to say. Amen. I'm starting out a little gentle. I may shout, may get bombastic, but I'm starting out gentle because I really love you. I care about what happens to you. And I believe that there are things that Jesus does even before he saves us, that proves his love for us. There are incidences of his voice speaking. There's very few of us that can't look back at a moment when we almost stepped off a curb and for some reason didn't, only to have a car zoom by that would have hit us, or a voice that just spoke and prevented such disaster and agony. We've all had that. Paul thinking about that, took it to its ultimate conclusion in the book of Acts, looking at the Athenians and preaching in an intellectual city, he said, the God that you ignorantly worship, I openly proclaim. Yes. And it was as if to say to them, look, all your life, there have been smatterings of truth, a dose that God's real. You've sat at a campsite, looked at a mountain and felt deep yearnings that you could not interpret completely. And now you're sitting there and some of you are going through the most horrible problems that a human being... If you and I had sat together, you would say, Mario, well, you can't imagine the tangled wreckage that my life is right now. And there's no way that a simple prayer can help me. I'm going to tell you that the fact that you're watching me, you're in that state of complete despair and this moment has arrived just in time. I have very little confidence in my own preaching. I wouldn't tell you that I believe I'm even one of the better preachers of this generation. I just thank God that He uses me out of His mercy. 
But in standing here tonight, I accepted an invitation two weeks ago to speak in a smaller group of full gospel businessmen. And it was a chapter meeting, and I was preaching many nights in a row, and I said, Lord, this isn't that big of a situation. And it was in the San Francisco area. And God said, I want you to go because those folks are going to receive something, and you're going to receive something. And here I am, a few weeks away from a big tent, and I'm speaking to maybe 150, 200 people in the San Francisco area. And as I'm speaking, a man is watching me. Maybe the way you're watching me right now. He was doing his best to be politely attentive to what I was saying, but I knew I wasn't getting through to him. I knew that he was a man of tremendous education. And at the end of it, the Spirit of God did a miracle in that man and he came forward and he's weeping and he receives Christ and he is one of the top corporate attorneys of the city of San Francisco, saved two weeks ago. And I believe that right now there is a profound yearning in your heart for a new life, a new beginning, a new start. And yeah, you are skeptical of people that tell you godly terms or use religious terminology. But the one thing that I'm banking on in the next 15 minutes is the Word of God and the Spirit of God melting your heart. Amen. And not, you're not going to be some weirdo. We're not going to ask you to shave your head and sell flowers at the airport. We're not talking anything bizarre. But you are going to discover the love and the power of Christ. Not an image that you have in your mind, but the reality. So everyone pray with me that thousands and tens of thousands who are listening right now will be remarkably changed yes, by the power and the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, that you will take the Word, take the Word, take the Spirit, O oh Lord, and put us in a position where the miracles are in the mainstream and bring, O oh Lord, a word of direct hope to this person so that they will see the love of God, the life of God, the Spirit of God, and the ministry of Jesus. In your name I ask it. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. I want to direct you very quickly to this third chapter of Acts. And directly say right here to all of you that are listening across the United States that I am going to share with you what has happened to me that has so revolutionized me in this issue, Miracles in the Mainstream. I believe that the charismatic movement right now faces a significant threat of extinction as a movement, of losing entirely its momentum and its power in America. And some of the reasons are already evident to you. Why is the Holy Ghost movement in trouble? I don't need to tonight go into the long, blistering, scathing review of why. Many of you know. I do believe that one of the primary reasons that we're in trouble is that this phrase has lost its significance to us. And you will receive power to be a witness. You will receive power to be a witness. There are four men in the Bible who are my favorite characters of the Old Testament in terms of comedy characters. They all had leprosy and they were dying. Now, the only thing worse than having leprosy is to have it during a famine because now you not only have a hideous disease, you can't even eat. And there were four of them sitting outside the wall and one of them was a complete pessimist. I've met people like that. I'm sure you have too. They can see nothing good in anything. So he says, we are going to die if we sit here. That's a profound revelation. He said, there's no food. If we sit here, we're going to die. The reason he knew that to be true is the city of Samaria that they lived in was surrounded by the Syrian army. The Syrian army had blockaded much what we're doing to Baghdad right now. They had blockaded that city. Now the next leper right beside him was even worse than he was. 
He said, not only will we die if we sit here, we go in the city, we'll die. Third one was the worst of all. He said, no matter what we do, we are going to die. If we sit here, we'll die. We go in the city, we'll die. And no matter what we do, we'll die. Now, the fourth leper saved the day. Yeah. He was like me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, someone might say, well, what in the world did you just do? Well, I'll tell you where we're alike. He was crazy. <laughs> and it helps sometimes. Oh, I'm not talking insanity. I'm talking being eccentric. He was eccentric, my favorite kind of person. So here I was. I want to leave that word eccentric hanging right there. And I want you to look at me. Do you know the Holy Ghost movement was founded by a pack of eccentrics? Sure. When I look at the smug, big, organizational dignity of the Holy Ghost movement today, I don't think they realize the wild hairs that founded this movement. Men who were willing to die with style. And that was where the fourth leper came in. How many of you still love me even though I'm saying this? Oh, yeah. The fourth leper was willing to die with style. In fact, let's go back to this pity party. If we sit here, we're going to die. If we go in the city, we're going to die. And the third one said, you know what, boys? No matter what we do, we're going to die. And the fourth one left to put on a tuxedo. <laughs> now imagine this guy. He comes back, cummerbund, everything. And the three look at him like, you are out of your mind. And he says, you're all right. We're going to die if we stay here. We're going to die if we go in the city. We're going to die no matter what we do. So let's go and raid the Syrians and get a sandwich before we die. Sure. If we're going to die, let's go out on a full stomach. Amen. Somebody say yeah, amen out on. there. <laughs> now, what I have just described to you is the nature of, and the character of every revivalist that has ever existed in the history of the church. Wesley was like this. Finney was like this. The Azusa Street pioneers were like this. And our problem is we are not. We don't know what is going on. I sat one day with Oral Roberts for several hours, and I'm not dropping a name. I'm just stating a fact. I s sat with him, and he recounted the turmoil of his early, early ministry, the criticism, the isolation, the agony and the frustration of obeying the Word of God that was deposited in him. The danger that I see is I look at two generations of Holy Ghost kids that have been raised now. We don't know the heat of the day. We don't know the passion to be different. And we don't understand the kind of self-sacrifice that went into producing. Every great miracle of God that has ever happened, happened because a man like that fourth leper said, if we have no hope, if the problem is impossible, then let's do something radical right now amen. and see what happens. Amen. Somebody say amen yes, out amen. there. Good. So he got up and he headed across the desert. And the other three are whining, we're going to die, we're going to die. And here's, imagine this. This is what we'll put up for one of the foolish statements of all time. One of the lepers grabbed the guy by the sleeve of his tuxedo and said, we can't go over there. They'll kill us. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what. Scott Peck talked about this in one of his books. In The People of the Lie, he described a psychological problem where people lose touch with reality and don't really understand their real choices. And he was talking about a woman that lived in, the, uh, in one of the Pacific Islands on a military base. And the people on her side of the mountains of the military base couldn't speak English. Everyone that could speak English was on the other side of the island. And the only car she could have access to was a stick shift car. And she didn't know how to drive a stick shift. So in her loneliness, she said to this, and he was at that time a, a psychiatrist chaplain for the armed services and he says to her why don't you learn how to drive because obviously you're suicidal she said I'm going to kill myself I see no reason to live I'm going to kill myself I'm going to take my life and, and Scott Peck asked her well if you're so lonely why don't you learn how to drive a car and she said seriously 
Did you see how treacherous those roads are? I could be killed. There's not a person that doesn't know at given points in history where if they stay where they are, they're going to die. Man said to me, I cannot follow Christ and I won't follow Jesus because I can't believe it's real and I don't trust that. I said, man, you get on a jet plane, you don't know anything about jets. You drive cars, that car pulls over and breaks, you wouldn't know how to change a rubber band on that thing. You trust your life, you go into a restaurant, you don't know if that's a sadistic chef back there that's paid, and paid off the, uh, the public health department. What if your surgeon cheated in medical school? What do you know? We have steps of faith that we take every day that are absurd. Yes. And they're yes. sitting there saying, we're going to die if we stay. We're going to die if we stay here. And the fourth one seemed to be eccentric. But really, when we think somebody may be crazy, don't make me say this over. If we think somebody may be crazy, they may be just radically normal. Yes. And yes. we're the ones that are out of touch. Yes. And maybe in their decision to do something unique, they're really sane. I believe that at this moment that we live in a strange time. It is the nature, it is the nature of movements that once had fire to literally end up in opposition of what it was they were first raised up to do. I'll give you an example. The Church of England threw John Wesley out of their church, attempted to excommunicate him because he preached outside of a church building and that was not right by their tradition you cannot preach outdoors that is really ironic the Methodist church was founded on the idea that God could save people outside of a building I mean this is an amazing discovery now 30 years after John Wesley dies the Methodists remove the ordination of a young, fiery preacher because he's preaching outside. Even though the foundation of the Methodist movement was open-air preaching. His name was William Booth. So having left the Methodist, he founded the Salvation Army. And that is a bizarre thing to imagine that a movement can evolve, literally, that bureaucrats can inherit a movement and then make it be not only what it wasn't, but yeah. opposite of what it should be about. And this fourth leper heading out across the desert. I want to go back to my main man in the tuxedo. <laughs> now here is the four lepers going across the desert. Meanwhile, a few miles away is a 150-foot salad bar in the Syrian camp. And they've got everything. They've got fruit. They've got salad. They've got a guy with the chef's hat making the Belgian waffles. It's Sunday brunch time, and these soldiers are having a time. And the Bible tells us that God made them to hear. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zero in on this. God made them to hear the sound of a mighty army. Now, what was that? Now, I want to demonstrate something to you. The lepers are weak. They're hungry. So they don't make a lot of noise, especially on sand. It's hard to stomp sand and get something out of it. But they're shuffling like this. They're doing this shuffle across the desert. God took their willingness to move and put a sound system under their feet. And he put a sound under them that was absolutely amazing. Because when God was through with the sound of their feet across the desert, they heard a mighty army. And when they heard this mighty army, they did not even bother to take another bite of prime rib. They ran, yeah. and they left the trail of food out there. Now, several minutes later, the four lepers arrive. They're in the outskirts of the camp, and the, one of them, being a negative, pessimistic person, starts yelling, Don't kill me! Don't kill me! And the guy in the tuck says, Shut up till we've had a sandwich! Don't invite trouble, let's go and eat! So he gets to the center of the camp, and they cannot believe. I mean, this has got to... I mean, folks, give me a massive break. This has got to be one of the most hilarious moments and ironic moments in human history. Five miles away where there is no food 
and there's an army starving to death and the citizenry are just in pandemonium for lack of food. And here five miles away are guys staring at food that you could never, ever finish eating. The soldiers are all gone and he is stacking his plate. He's putting the food on the plate. The other three are like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there, it is no doubt to me that the same eccentricity that makes it impossible for them to handle blessing is in many, many people. They can't handle this. Yeah. They want to analyze it. How did this happen? Why did this happen? And suddenly, they're feeding on the blessing that came. Now, this is my point. Number one, and ne never forget this. Number one, Christianity must be exposed to the unsaved to have vitality. Amen. You know, MSG is monosodium glutamate. It gives food flavor and it has some bad side effects. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that my wife says in a Chinese restaurant after we got in our water is she said, tell the cook we want no MSG in our food. But there is a Holy Ghost MSG and it doesn't have bad side effects. And it's found in the book of Philemon. It says this, and this is the first phrase, miracles in the mainstream. I pray that you will be active in sharing your faith so that you may know the good things you have in Christ. If I were to look at charismatics that I see all over America right now, this book doesn't thrill them anymore. They're not thrilled in church. They're trying to work up a high. They go to seminars to get high again on God seminars. And they can't. And you point to this. Have you continued to witness and share your faith? Do you study the act of sharing your faith? Do you give it away? It is as though God said this. You know the joy you have in the Lord? The peace you have in Christ? The power you have over an authority and the sense of God's presence? None of that will impact you anymore. When you sit under preaching, it will not move you. When you try to taste the good things of God, the flavor will not be in your mouth because the MSG of the Spirit is giving your faith away. And what has happened is in charisma as a movement, in the charismatic movement, is there's been this entire getting out of the mainstream. They're circling the wagons because the Indians are shooting fiery arrows at us. And we're pulling back and we're retiring. And so more and more and more of our sermons are to each other. More and more of our preaching is to each other. And this is where we are. The movement has gone across the desert, has sat in the feast of God's breakthrough. Look at where we are right now. We are watching a miracle in that we have a television network. We have the opportunity to preach in America like we have never preached before. Amen. We have the time, we have the opportunity. Pulpits across America right now are not saying, in my opinion, what they ought to be saying right now. On Sunday morning, there is more and more trying to be profound and deep and spiritual and, and, and exciting. And when the simple fact of the matter is, is that what we are here to do is say, if I give my faith away and am poured out where it hurts, that life is going to come. Amen. So you know what? The most powerful scripture, and I was asked this recently. They asked me, what do you think is the single most important thing God is saying to the charismatic movement right now, nationwide? I said, it's a verse, and it's that fourth leper. They've eaten the Belgian waffles. They've had several helpings of the, of the English trifle. They've had Yorkshire pudding and prime rib. They have eaten until they can't eat no more and they're sitting laughing and the next thing, that the spirit of Nordstrom comes on them and they go start trying on clothes in the different tents and they start wrapping silk turbans and they're sitting there and they all sit down and now they're kind of laying back burping with all of this clothes on and one of them says to the other, what we're doing is not right. What we're doing is not right. This may, give, this may make a few cancellations for me in the next few weeks, but Holy Ghost movement, what we're doing is not right. The next statement he said, I could imagine titling a book this next phrase. He said, if we linger here, a great foolishness will come upon us.
And I began to realize we linger here. If we linger in this consumerist faith, in this sloppy agape, in this self-oriented me, mine religion, a great foolishness is going to come on us. If we celebrate the miracles we've received, if we eat too much of this revelation without giving it away. And the last thing the leper said, he said, remember this, this is a three-point sermon. He said, what we're doing is not right. I have had opportunities to work with many ministries. It's been a thrill to work with Paul and Jan over the years. The thing that has kept me so excited about them is their unrelenting commitment to speak to the lost in everything they do, to devote every available opportunity to feel the hurt that's out there. See, I can say that what I see is a round lens and a little red light, but if your heart is really in tune, you can see an ocean of human need. And this is the exact same thing that that leper finally came to, the same one who wore the tuxedo, same one who took the walk, the same one who dragged his friends over, who sat down at the table, was the first one finished eating so he could do all the talking, sat there and said, what we're doing is not right. And if we linger here, a great foolishness will come upon us. And I'm in trouble now. Okay? But a great foolishness is in a lot of meetings, and it bothers me. A lot of mannerisms that disturb me. Because... The word accountability comes up, and those of you that are not Christians, please listen to me because I want to tell you something. A lot of your misgivings about what we do may be well-founded, and God help us to understand that. I have a board of elders that sits in judgment of my life. I'm accountable to them. Accountability. A minister has several forms of accountability. He has an accountability to this book. He may come up with some fancy new slant on a scripture, and I've seen some of them bend them so far out of context that he, they give them a hernia. But the third thing is that there's an accountability to the lost yes. that a preacher has. I heard one preacher say to me, when I get my offering from the pastor, he told me this, they don't even count it. It's all cash put in a briefcase and I leave, and that's it because no one has a right to know what's going on. And I said, brother, everyone has a right to know. Everyone has a right. And by saying that, you're saying that if somebody who's lost knew how I was being funded privately, I wouldn't change how I do it because, see, my, my accountability is not to that lost person. Paul knew that. He said it this way, providing all things honest in the sight of God and man and commending ourselves to every man's conscience. I went to another guy, and he had a little unique way of getting people to fall down, and it was strange. So I said, now, if that confused the sinner, the way you're doing it, if it confused the sinner, not that, and I tell him, nobody shouts louder than me, nobody runs the aisles faster than I do, and nobody prays in the Spirit out loud in front of unsaved people more often than I do with teaching and explanation." But there's some things we do that really aren't that at all. It's kind of like we do it for effect, even though it may engender some questions. But the issue is this. I have got to be sensitive to two kinds of church services. I want to tell you, Paul described too. He said, if all of you are praying in tongues, no explanation, then they're going to think you're crazy. But on the other hand, if you prophesy, then they will declare that God is in you of a truth. So the Lord said to Mark, what kind of a service do you want? One where they go away saying you're crazy or one where beholding the miracles that are in you, they literally fall on their face and receive the Lord. So I want you to understand where I am. I'm in the middle because I believe in the gifts of the Spirit operating whenever possible. In fact, I may call out some illnesses tonight as the Lord directs. That's up to Him. But the issue that I'm saying is this. When... We lose sight of our connection to the lost. We begin to want miracles that are for the family only, for private family consumption only, and then the power level goes way down. 
Turn it around and say this. Let's have the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear, and then make those who are healed go and see their doctor. Get that doctor's report. Amen. Don't just bless us in this room. Go out and get that report, and then the word will spread that God is real. Somebody amen. say amen. Yes. Right on. Somebody say amen to that. See, I, I want you to join my organization. I call it the radical middle. <laughs> Get in the radical middle with me. The ones over here that say we believe in all kinds of manifestations, everything, no matter how weird it is, because it blesses us. Well, you have a connection to the lost. And you need to understand that if that, some of that's flesh, you better correct it because you're confusing them. And then on the right, we have these other boys that bother me just as much as these over here. They're saying, you see, Mario, these people over here have abused the gifts, so I don't want the gifts anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to operate. Right, and, and it isn't on the left, it isn't on the right. It's in the radical middle. And the radical middle says this. Yes. Let's go to God and ask the Lord for manifestations of the Spirit that have balance and dignity and clarity. And yes, we're going to shout. And yes, we're going to dance. I guarantee you that when the person gets up out of that wheelchair, the sinners are going to dance with you. Sure. But I tell you what, if there is... Yes, amen. They're going to follow you in the dance. But the issue is this. Put them in the mainstream. Put them out there in the mainstream. What I want to get to the point is this. I'm going to say something. I remember a remark. I was in San Francisco and I turned on TV and I had to fight a little anger in my spirit. And, and uh, I was listening to the leader of CNN, Ted Turner, and he made his remarks about Christians being bozos and Ten Commandments being obsolete. And boy, I got real upset. And then we had our crusade in San Francisco and we had the earthquake. And the Lord said, I will cause the wrath of man to praise me. So a, a month after our crusade, the earthquake happened. The day of the earthquake, the first three people interviewed were in Santa Cruz. The networks were all blown off the air. And the first one back on is CNN. And CNN reporter is there. And we're live from San Francisco, the Santa Cruz area. And we got these three ladies that were in a mall that fell down. And that'll get your attention if you're in a mall and it falls down. Yeah. And they left the mall and they, everyone was fine. But, and the ground had moved the whole city of Santa Cruz, downtown area, virtually was devastated. And so here are thousands of people in, in shock. And, he, and this reporter picks these three ladies and asks them a question. What was it like? They described all the, the wreckage. And then they said, how do you feel? Are you scared? And the lady said, no. All three of us just got saved at the Cow Palace and Mario Murillo's crusade <laughs> on CNN. Went all over the United States. Hello, Ted. <laughs> Miracles in the mainstream means that the devil puts a fear on the church that if we hang our shingle out where Geraldo Rivera can see it and Ted Koppel can see it and, and they can investigate it. They say, oh, we're going to investigate you. We're going to investigate you. You cannot imagine how if you want to retain your atheism that the worst thing you could ever do is to honestly investigate the claims of Jesus Christ. Hey, hey. Because in every step you take, there'll be life, there'll be power, there'll be joy. Don't get too close to us unless you're ready to see a miracle. I'm telling the secular media, you can come in here with this presumption that we're all in it for the money and we're all phony, but I'm telling you something. There's something that you don't understand. The miracles of Jesus don't back down, deflate, and lose their power in the laboratory of secular thinking. They become mighty. They become powerful. They become overwhelming in that environment because that's where we belong. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Amen. Great job. What we're doing is not right. If we linger here too long, a great foolishness will come upon us. And I, for one, am going to tell you that when you talk to a lot of men today, there are many professional preachers running around. I'm an evangelist. I'm done now. And they don't have the original excitement they once had in their ministry, and that's because the miracles are not in the mainstream. A person said, well, Mario, you're going to Detroit and New York, and you're going to all these hard areas. Boy, I tell you what, you're really in for it. You're not going to have the, the simplicity and the easiness of what you had preaching in churches. And I smiled 
I said, you couldn't have it more backwards. Yeah. When it's hard is when I'm not in the mainstream. When it's hard is when you put a candle under a lampstand. When it's hard is when you try to take what's mainstream and make it a side issue. When you bring it out, you'll know. You know what I want you to do now? I want those who are pastors. If you feel a fear of the lost, a detachment from your relationship with the lost, then understand why your church is not growing. Don't buy any more of those tapes on how to grow a church overnight. Get on your knees Amen. and understand that the way a church grows is by crying out to God and saying, Lord, this city needs a living expression of God in the mainstream. Paul wanted to be a retiring legal professor. Instead, he ended up in Rome, in the mainstream. Peter said to Jesus, I'm going fishing. I can't take it anymore. And then Jesus is raised from the dead. The first thing that Jesus said to Peter was this, go back to Jerusalem. Go back to the mainstream and wait for power. Why can't you give me power out here in the North 40? Because the mainstream is where I want to display my glory. In Psalm 23, David said something that almost sounds bizarre. You prepare a table before for me in the presence of my enemy. Who wants to eat there? But yet that is where we belong. Everything about us is mainstream. Everything about this message is come, look, investigate, test it. Look and see and you'll find that it's right. It's powerful. You say, I don't want Jesus because I'm a rebel. Maybe you're not rebellious enough yet to be a Christian. <laughs> Good. Say, I don't want Jesus because I'm looking for something real. You can't imagine that maybe your honesty isn't good enough yet to really say, Jesus, let me see you. Tomorrow, I want to live life. I want to do something wild. I remember preaching to a house full of punk rockers, looking at them and saying, you're not weird enough yet. And having them stare at me the way a raccoon stares at truck headlights. <laughs> you're not radical enough yet. Right now, life is telling you, you're a loser. Nothing good's going to happen. Christianity is the attitude of that fourth leper. Amen. If I'm going to live life, if I'm going to be beaten, I'm going out in style. I'm going to give my life to Christ right now. I'm going to give my problem to Christ. And I'm going to say to Jesus, Lord, come into my life, revolutionize me. Amen. See, maybe you've seen the failure of the church, everything I described tonight. You may not agree with everything I said, but I think in your heart you know I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you what you need to do. And I'm going to lead you in prayer right now. I want you to bow your head, and I'm going to ask every single person who is at the point of being willing to say, Jesus, transform me. Make me alive. I'm going to ask you to receive Jesus, right now, say these words. Say, Jesus, come into my heart and break the curse and weight of life by the power of your Spirit. Live in me. I believe you rose from the dead. And I believe in your promise to forgive me. And I take it to myself. My eyes are not on my problems. My eyes are on you and the miracle that you will do. In Jesus' name, amen. There are two things that I, I want to do now, and I want to do them quickly right before this song. The first one is that we love you, and you will find a gentle, understanding voice on the other side of that phone, if you will call the number that you see on the screen. Second is, there's no question that one of the main reasons that I have joined Paul and Jan tonight is to 
garner the prayers of the body of Christ nationwide for our crusade in San Francisco. If we break this city for Jesus, if we are able to get a breakthrough, then I believe the nation will know it. And there's something very explosive about what starts this Sunday afternoon at 2.30 at the corner of 4th and King in downtown San Francisco. There's something mighty, and that is we have the opportunity to hold on to that land for an indeterminate period of time should a breakthrough occur. That has not ever been a possibility for us before. So can you imagine? Jesse Dixon is going to join us Sunday afternoon. We're going to have Jesse Dixon, and we're going to have Jeff Fenholt in San Francisco with us, and many surprise guests. But we're going to start Sunday afternoon at 2.30, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And when, if the thing breaks open, we will go another week and take it from day to day to see what is going to be happening. There'll be something going on virtually every night. The date, it's September the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. And then again on the 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th. And the services on Sunday will be at 2.30. And on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And we would love for everyone listening in the Bay Area to be a part of this great miracle. Because those of you in the Bay Area know, if we break the seat of Satan through the preaching of the gospel and prayer, Amen. the rest of the Bay Area will fall. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Paul. Praise God. Yeah. Let's tell Mario, thank you for that good word tonight. And we charismatics all need to hear Amen. that word tonight. Amen. In a minute, Mario, I want us to pray for the suffering and the sick that have phoned in. I'm going to have the guys sing a, a song. And that will give you a chance to get your prayer request in. And those of you that prayed with Mario to confess him as your yeah. Lord and Savior. The word is very clear. Confess with your mouth. We've got a whole room of beautiful prayer partners there ready to talk with you and pray with you and love you. Lead you to Christ. Hear your confession of faith. In fact, they're already calling, Mario, from just all over the country. La Habra, California. Linda Harbor, New Jersey. Eureka, California. Bellevue, Washington. Los Angeles. Manhattan Beach, California. L.A. Hawthorne, L.A. Many parts are just beginning now to check in and receive Christ as Savior. You know, what you said tonight, Mario, is, is um, in some ways a little painful to all of us, and especially those who, you know, profess to be whatever, Pentecostal, charismatic. The, the question, I guess, is any move of God, any great revival, any whatever, whether it's the Wesley revival or the Moody or the whatever, Azusa Street, it all starts, you know, with a visitation yes. of God, a, the glory of God falls, whether That's it's right. a, a day of Pentecost or a day of Azusa Street. It's just plain old human nature, I guess, for that to wind down, and then God has to do it all over again. I, is, is there any... I guess it's a rhetorical question, and maybe there isn't any answer to it. What do we do? What? You know, you, you can learn a lot from surfers. <laughs> surfers? Surfers. Because I do believe that when a movement starts to, you know, like one man said, the purpose of bureaucrats is to jump into the flow of human progress and coagulate it. Yeah. And, <laughs> and there is a there is a generation that comes up reaping the benefits of a prior leper's courage. Yeah, yeah. See, a faith, mm -hmm. excitement, a boldness, a sacrifice. Sometimes that, and, and this is a painful reality, that I, a somber truth for me is that in that apostolic power, that man may not take the time to see to it that his son or his, his next generation has the fire he had, mm -hmm. that in his, 
is almost subconscious yearning to protect them from what I had to go through, quote unquote. Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm, he's in mm -hmm. protecting them from what I had to go through, he's protecting them from the catalyst of power that made him what he was. Ooh, Ooh that's an excellent point. And, and, yeah, and, and, yeah. and I'm saying that with fear and trembling, yeah. <laughs> you know, for my two and a half year old you, son. You, you don't take a little baby and just totally no. isolate him from germs, do you? You no. have to let him get immune. And exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and then there comes a time when the sons of the prophets may not have what their prophet fathers had. And in that case, it is incumbent on the aware, the awareness, the people who have discernment, to sit there, and like I said about surfers, is there's a wave of God coming in right now. There's, there's always. The faithfulness of God is that there will be a wave. Unfortunately, right before a wave breaks that's of God, it always hinders the people who are defending the previous mm -hmm. methodical <laughs> hierarchy that's mm -hmm, been developed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so there they are. They're caught loyal to things they ought not to be loyal to. Yeah, yeah. So suddenly, the, you know, it's like we got a machine that's supposed to produce orange juice. It's 12 stories high, and we get three drops a week. <laughs> and, you know, and we're going, why in the world has this happened? Well, everyone responsible for a various level of the orange juice machine is defending their existence. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, if I tell you or you say to me, why isn't this thing working? The surfer sits there and reads the signs. Right before revival, God breaks an attitude. Say racism, materialism, mm -hmm. jealousy, mm -hmm. pride, arrogance. So the men, you can tell where revival is going to break because there are men and women crying over their own sin, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. feeling the, the absolute void in their life and saying, you know, I'm out of line. I'm there. It was like that. Yeah. There's and, a foolishness. And, and willing it. to dismantle the oh, orange yeah. juice machine if they <laughs> have to. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And yeah. just cut them and squeeze them. Like <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> really? Exactly right. Yeah. Oh, oh, Lord. And that's where we are. I really believe you that. You know, one of the waves that's coming in, I see it. I hear it. I hear it from prophets, prophecies, things coming in, people's attitudes. Is forgiveness oh. and love of our brothers in yes. the kingdom no matter what. Loving and forgiving. What Jesus came to do, we forgot. It's and we haven't loved and forgiven. Yeah. There is a little brother that wrote an article. I'm telling you, Francis Frangipane. I remember his name. And jo Joan, I read it on behind the scenes when I have gotten... I cannot tell you how many requests for that. <clears throat> it is called um, The Accuser of the Brethren Exposed. Exposing Ooh. the Accuser of the Brethren and who that's coming from and how the Lord is bringing back love and forgiveness I'll and what you. the body is all about. Yeah. Loving you. Yeah. I love you. You've yeah. got faults, Mario. Yeah. You've had problems. Yeah. We loved you anyway. Amen. And that's what the body, you've loved us through Amen. our silliness and problems and things. Everybody loving each other. All we've got is each other. I'll tell you one of the most all we've got. dynamic examples of what you're saying. You know, what's, what's really hurting me right now is that there are young men with awesome gifts, but they're so insecure that they go off to an extreme. Yeah. Mm. And then when they go off to an extreme, an established ministry who ought to have a little more mercy yeah cuts them off, yeah. driving them into further isolation yes. when their gift is so wonderful so and we need to bring them back. And, and you know, uh, I don't know of any man that embodies this more than Jack Hayford, the ability to sit you down and, and literally run over you three or four times exactly. and make you feel like, boy, I'm feel being loved it. here. Love you know, I mean, love me again. Ooh, love me. Ooh, love me again. I mean, but with a determination that the end of that correction is restoration right. and not rejection. Amen. See? Amen. That I was reading the book of Acts one day and one little verse came out. This was so precious to me, Paul. The Lord said one of the heroes of revival in the New Testament was Barnabas. Mm. And I said, why? He said, Barnabas was a great preacher in his own right. His visibility was, was rising at the time that Saul of Tarsus became Paul the Apostle. <laughs> Paul the Apostle had put the relatives of Christians in Jerusalem in prison. Mm -hmm. But Paul 
Barnabas discerned. Right now, I'm a more famous preacher than Paul, but I see the handwriting on the wall. Mm -hmm. This man is a legend, mm -hmm. and God's hand is on him. Mm -hmm. Now, the church doesn't like him, and he's a suspicious renegade, but I'm going to submerge my own visibility oh, boy. and take on the diplomatic responsibility of building a bridge between Paul and the Jerusalem church. And then further to reinforce his commitment to Paul, then went ahead and traveled with him and let him be the leader. Mm. Wow. Wow. Ooh, ooh, what a lesson. What, what a, a lesson. spirit we've got to have yeah. like that yeah. today. Oh, that, that's dynamite. We needed to hear this tonight, Mario. Lord Thank God. you. Thank you. Uh, I tell you what, let's, um, let's just have a brief word of prayer and then we'll, we'll have uh, a, a song. But honey, share some of the urgent prayer Here's needs. Someone, that are honey, in. from Mesa, um, Arizona, has pneumonia and inoperable cancer. Oh, Jesus. And uh, is needing a miracle. Here's someone needs deliverance from alcohol, drugs, said, I need salvation. Um, just worn out physically, going through a divorce. Pray for healing of a little mute child. Mm -hmm. Seven years old in the hospital with a malignant cancer. Oh, Jesus. Seven years old. Little Eddie. Some, that the Lord's going to lay Eddie on somebody's heart, and you're going to just That's right. intercede That's and right. intercede and intercede for that child. Mm -hmm. The Father is a Jehovah Witness. Oh, Little Eddie's oh, going to be healed. Oh, God. Uh, right shoulder pain tonight. Son has in, having problems with the eyes. A little eight-year-old, here's a little eight-year-old, has possible leukemia from Fort Worth, Texas. Lord Jesus, here's a little 92 year that needs some special care. I tell you, she needs someone to to stay with her for October, November, and that's what the body is for. Yes. Uh, if you will call back in, darling, and give us your name and address, we have some precious young people that I know one Amen. of them would be glad to just stay with you. Amen. We know some wonderful people. That is the body being the body. That's it. Here's just um, marriage problems, need a financial miracle. So many needs, honey. Oh, Lord. So many needs. Well, let's don't just talk about miracles and even preach about them. Let's, let's believe God yes, to do Lord. them right. tonight in Jesus' name. Hundreds of needs. Many are on the phone to bring the slips to me just as quickly as they come in. But, Mario, let's have a, let's have a little divine healing Hallelujah. right now. Would you lead us? Thank you. I see the Spirit of Jesus as He healed the sick, a divine mixture of deep compassion and yet total authority over that crisis. Amen. Amen. And Father, our hearts are broken for these needs that were mentioned, <clears throat> but our faith is rising for them. For Lord, You are touching them. And I bind the devil. Amen. You who have hurt and marred lives, we bind you, we rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we command miracles, miracles of God to be in every single household that is represented by these sheets of paper. Every child, every woman, every man, every little boy, every Every little girl, every single disease, Amen. every person we do it. is healed. We pray and believe God. We reach out to touch on their behalf for a miracle in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Thank Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Receive your touch and your Thank healing you. in Jesus' name. Mario, know that we'll be in prayer with you and for you. And I know thousands watching tonight. We'll have you on your on their hearts as, Amen. as you open in the big tent Sunday. Yes, sir. In Miracles in the mainstream. Wow. Ooh, it's go, gonna be historic. Go, go get them, son. Hallelujah. Go get them. Go get them. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Amen. Jesus' name. 
How many, just give me a little poll up there. How many will put Mario and the whole team on your prayer list? Glory to God. You, 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 got, a, you got a hundred percent right here in, Glory little, to God. in our little amen corner tonight. So I know that's amen. a poll. Of many hands were going up out there. We can't see you, but we feel that spirit. We know that you'll be in intercession and prayer with Mario Glory as he moves God. into, I suppose, one of the neediest cities in the whole wide world. Harold's Quartet is going to bless you right now. Jack Van Imp, he's Ooh, coming. Rock Rexella yes. is coming. And we're going to settle Amen. all the problems of the Middle East tonight. <laughs> yes. In Jesus' name. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> laugh. No. It's in yes. this book, man. That's right. Every problem is solved. That's Every right. question is answered. Every dilemma is sorted out. It's all in the book. So get your books out, folks. We're going to have a great time as we look into some awesome things that are happening over in the Middle East right now and see again if the Holy Spirit won't help us discern kind of how it all fits into this prophetic p pattern yes. and plan. Last night I, I missed it, but I talked with Al Lindsay. He and Chuck Smith and I don't know who else Chuck was. Messler. Chuck Messler were here last night. Mm. They solved part of the problem. We're going to finish it tonight, okay? okay. Get, your, get your books out. The song <laughs> says, The Lord is coming. Are you ready? Oh, boy. Come on. Harold Cordell. Sing it. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God and in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go for thee. The Lord is coming. Are you ready? The Lord is coming. Are you of God all are true. Jesus bought your life on Calvary's mountain, and soon he will come again for you. The Lord is coming, are you? Hey guys, stay right there for a second, will you? Let, let me just mention again the great ministry that these, these guys are engaged in. They're moving out further and further. I know you still do a lot of work in church, but man, I was thrilled to hear you're going into the prisons now and singing and ministering inside the prisons and in, in hospitals and other places. And many of you will want to get in touch with the Herald's Quartet. Uh, throw that address up again. Many of you will want to invite them to come. Uh, you know, if pastors and churches want you, uh, how far ahead are you booked? Uh, you know, uh, about about six months in, a, in advance. So, but there it is. A lot of you will want to drop them a note, get in touch with them, get information on their... They've got a brand new CD out with some beautiful 
uh, you, you got to sing, Come Thou Found of Every Blessing for Me. Can you sing that one tonight? Can't do that one tonight. Okay. I'll tell you what. The reason I ask you to stay for a moment is um, I was thrilled to hear last night that they have done recordings in 27 different languages. And, man, that all of a sudden the light cord was pulled, and I said, wait a minute. As, as God's opening all these doors, we're going to these foreign countries, we're building the International Production Center there in the Dallas area. Uh, man, we we, we got to have you guys come and Just and how much better than you know those old subtitles and stuff under there to have you guys actually sing in the languages. Even though, uh, as you confess to me, you uh, you don't really understand all those languages. You've learned phonetically how to to do it. Like opera singers do. You know, I guess what we need is what Mario's talking about on Acts chapter 2. Maybe the Holy <laughs> Spirit will hit you guys some, some night. You'll just all. sing in tongues. <laughs> tongues. In the tongues that the people understand. Hey, God can Amen. do it again. He He's really can. That. I have I testimonies have testimony of, of, it too. of that happening yeah. on two occasions that I know of. Mm -hmm. uh, but while you're there, would you do your Spanish number for us? Now, some of you guys actually speak Spanish, don't you? Or... A, a little bit, but some of you have just we phonetically learned how to sing. What, what song you gonna, can you do for us? What does that mean? Far beyond the sun. Far, far, far beyond, beyond the sun far. in Spanish. And by the way, let me just say quickly, they also have a complete cassette in Spanish. So some of you good Hispanic folks will want to also uh, get that address and drop them a note, and they'll be happy, I'm sure, to send you information on how you may uh, get their material, beautiful record albums, CDs, cassettes, whatever. Bless these guys and thank them for coming and ministering to us on the Praise the Lord program. And many of you will want to invite them to come with you and uh, be in your services. All right. The what now? Masaya del Sol. Did I say that all right? I have just learned a little so, Spanish. <laughs> yes. Muy poquito. <laughs> Muy poquito. <laughs> Very little. No habla <laughs> espanol. No. Okay, let's, let's give it to the Heralds Quartet one more time. God bless you guys. Aunque en esta vida no tengo riqueza
Bravo, bravo. The Herald's Quartet. Thank you, guys. And we'll have lots more good singing tonight. But I want you to say hello to two wonderful people that are blessing you every week right here on the Trinity Broadcasting Network from Royal Oak, Michigan. Twice a week. Twice. Yes, that's right. There's a second run now. <laughs> Jack and Rexella Van Impe. Uh, Dr. Van Impe has conducted more fundamentalist sponsored citywide crusade than any other evangelist in the 20th. You mean you, you, you actually won up to James Robinson? Really and uh, we had uh, 1,200 crusades of which 270 were citywides, uh, in which 10 million people attended the meetings. Mm -hmm. Where was I? <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. You were in the Simley Good Church. I was, I was in my little four walls. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we I know. Hey, I, and that now covers we found a, you. <laughs> and I've been, this is my 42nd year in evangelism. No. Uh, mm -hmm. You were two when you began. You're right. <laughs> well, my goodness. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Jack and Ruxell have also been in television for many years, many primetime specials, weekly television. In addition to the Trinity Broadcasting Network, Jack told me about a hundred secular stations now. Your, yes. Your network is growing, growing, growing. That's wonderful. Um, of course, I don't have to tell the TBN family here what kind of a program. It's, it's a, a news analysis of prophetic events in the world, ties it into scripture. Uh, Jack does his homework and... Uh, doesn't so does Rick <laughs> get way out there on the limb and, you know, set dates and all that kind of stuff. And let me just tell you quickly, the Van Impey's program uh, can be seen on TBN Mondays at 10 p.m. California time. All of these are California times. And Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. California. California time. That's the prime time run and the others to kind of catch the West Coast out here. From Royal Oak, Michigan, let's tell Jack and Rexella welcome tonight to Praise the Lord. Betcha. Oh, my goodness. Uh, as a good old fundament ex-fundamentalist, I guess I'd have to say now, uh, you were reading the mail here, hearing what uh, Mario had to say. Did you have a thought or two before we settle the Middle East problem here? Uh, my heart was really blessed a few months ago when I got a special letter from Dr. C.M. Ward. Because as a teenager, I would listen to him on the Assembly of God Hour, even though I was a Baptist. Ooh, a closet C.M. Ward listener. <laughs> oh, but that man oh. blessed my heart. He had yeah. something that few ministers on radio had. And he sent me this letter with a large donation saying, My wife and I watch your program regularly, really? and we trust you and Rexala. That really meant something to Whoa. have my hero write and tell me that. And we're featuring his article in the November-December issue of our Perhaps Today magazine entitled, Is the Charismatic Renewal Failing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just wrote him. He, if he's listening, it'll the be in there. He's listening. He's but listening. Um, I think the trouble is, <coughs> and I'm one who has sought the filling of the Holy Spirit, and I think where we fail is Ephesians 5.18 says in the literal Greek, be being filled. Mm -hmm. You just mm -hmm. constantly, daily mm -hmm. seek the new infilling. Mm -hmm. yes. And I think we've sought the wrong thing. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, Acts 1.8. But there's more to it than that. There was a boldness these men had. And we talk about the charismatic gifts. Well, charisma in Greek means gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of us Baptists don't understand is that every born-again Christian is part of the charismatic movement right. because every believer gets at least one gift. Yes. 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 The gift of faith, yeah. if nothing else. Okay. Gift of giving. And I, I always like to document everything. So uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 7, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man, to a problem with all. Verse 11, he divides to every man yes. as he will. Now, that's the problem when we say, if you don't have my gift, you don't have it. He divides to every man as he will. But he did say, seek earnestly the best gifts. Oh, yeah. they're the best. Oh, right? Yeah. But yeah. He, he was talking about prophecy there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? First Corinthians 14, <laughs> 5. Right. And that's the fourth tell. And I've always told you how much um, some of the men meant to me. And... Uh, I was reading uh, or listening to one of the tapes the other day of my dear friend. I don't know who, honey. You he recently so went to be with the Lord. Oh. 
Uh, you taught at Melody Land. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. I just can't get his yeah. name from her. Walter Martin. Walter Martin. Walter Martin. Walter Martin. He said that yes. in every instance in the New Testament, the gift of prophecy is always forth telling the good news. You cannot find one instance where they are foretelling the future. But anyway, that, that's beside the point. The thing I wanted to say is, I think the reason we're all in trouble today is this old carnal nature that is not being dominated daily by the fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, we all have one of the gifts, and that's why the gifts are not important. The fruit in which we minister the gifts is important. Oh, man. And Jan was talking about love. Okay. Well, if we have that fresh infilling daily, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, yeah. gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. We're not ministering the fr uh, gifts in the fruit of the Spirit, see? But that's why 1 Corinthians 13, 1 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, gift, and have not love, the fruit, I become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, the gift, to remove mountains, and have not love, the fruit, to minister those gifts, I am nothing. 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 Yeah. And at the judgment day, they say, Jesus, we've prophesied in your name. In your name have cast out devils. In your name have done many wonderful works, miracles. Three gifts. Christ says, I never knew you. Ooh. They were living in sin. Why didn't he know them? They had the gifts, but not the fruit to minister the gifts. Right. And daily I say, Lord, give me the fruit. And I think if there is a charismatic renewal that's failing, as Dr. C.M. Ward says, and as our brother Morella said, I think it's we're not seeking the daily infilling that produces the fruit. Yeah. Jack, mm. I almost interrupted you there, honey, a minute ago, because I wanted to say I seldom watch TV during the day, but I did turn on your program, Jan, the other morning, and I'm so happy we have cable now. We didn't have cable for a long time. Now we can watch you when we're at home, and I can turn it on. You blessed my heart so much that I had to sit down and just, just drop you a note and say thank it, you for blessing my heart. It was so really, it just blessed me. She looked into the camera and sincerely, oh, how I felt the Lord coming through. You said, I don't care what you've done. I love you. And that's what he's talking about. The fruit was so there, the, the fruit of love. But what would Jesus say, Rick Zella? He would look at you and he would look in the camera and say those words, I don't care what you've done. I love you. That's what he came for. While we were yet sinners. And I think that is the next wave that the body is picking up on. Exactly. Well, We've got to love each other. Amen. Exactly. I'm fired up. I've got to go, say this go, yet, go. Paul. All you right. know, we say, Lord, give me this. But for what reason? What is our motive? Mm -hmm. um, John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb, mm -hmm. Luke 1, 15. And what did it produce? Matthew 3, 7. O oh, generation of vipers who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Mm -hmm. There is the power and boldness. Yes. See, that's what we don't want. And what was the result? He was beheaded. <laughs> yes. All right. Jesus had the Holy Spirit come on him at his baptism, Matthew 3.16. What did it cause in his preaching? Matthew 23. Eight times you scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, you <laughs> blind. And he ends it up with verse 33. You generation of sin. Mm -hmm. yes. How shall you escape the damnation of hell? What happened? They nailed him to a cross. Mm -hmm. Stephen, filled with the Holy Ghost, Acts 7:56, preaches bombastically, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised and heart and ears. What happened? <laughs> they stoned him to death. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul, who said, be filled with the Spirit, Ephesians 5:18, saw Sergius Paulus in Acts 13:10. He says, you child of the devil. You enemy of all righteousness. And that's what the Holy Spirit does too. Yeah, that's not, not only a very popular message. The one aspect, there? he produces love, but he also produces boldness to speak against sin. And we've got one-sidedness today that just talks love, but we don't want to Mm -hmm. that's blast good. Good. out against good. sin. That's good. Right. That's wonderful. And I guess maybe there's a little fear on the part of some. I mean, um, that message wasn't received too well, was it? They were all put to death. Yeah. You know? And yeah. Paul was you know finally what, You know beheaded. what I think the bottom line is, though, really? Yes. 
fruits of the Spirit, mm -hmm. balanced with the gifts of the Spirit. But man, the bottom line is, by this shall all men know you're my disciple. The thing that will convince that sinner right. and bring him to the cross is when he sees we Christians quit beheading each right. other yeah. and yeah. fighting each other and spitting on each other and ex well, exposing each other to the press. <laughs> and I wrote that book on heart disease. I was a bigoted, prejudiced believer. I was in the only group that was right. And um, the Spirit of God worked in my heart. That was eight years ago. And I have a love for all God's people today. And I'd never go back to the other way, Paul. And you know yeah. what's happening? God's blessing. Your ministry. ministry is exploding. All Your ministry is booming I've around the world. I've never seen now. anything. From 1983 onward, we were at a standstill. I've been in this 42 years. And then last year, and I've had over 2,000 ministers, evangelists, missionaries, writes, saying, your book, Heart Diseases, help us to love all Christians. And it's a new day for me. Mm. The body of Christ. Glory to God. <laughs> I'm part of it. And I don't care what our labels are. Excellent. As I said on this program before, Christianity Today reported there are 20,780 different Christian denominations in existence today. How many? 20,780 <laughs> in all the various parts of the world. And then we have the one guy who says the 20,779 are wrong, and I'm the only <laughs> yes, one. Yes, yes. Oh, brother. <laughs> he forgets First Kings 19.18, yet I've reserved 7,000. Yes. He's not bowed me to bail. Yes. You know, uh, when among our friends at home who are watching your program, all denominations, I have to say, I really feel the Lord has laid his hand upon Paul and Jan, mm. for a very special reason, not only to encircle the globe with the gospel, but to expound what we're talking about tonight. I've talked to Catholics, Baptists, Methodists, all denominations, they're watching this program, and you know, they love you. They really do love you, and they love what you're saying. They're listening to you because they feel the love. I'm so glad, Jack, that the Lord brought us to TBN. I really, I am. really yeah. am. We're glad. You know, years ago, you <laughs> folks really were on Channel am. 62 in Detroit before you started this yeah. men's network. Mm -hmm. And I would see Jan hopping up and down and say, I wonder who that is. <laughs> you know? And that today, I want to tell you that uh, God has put a special love in our hearts for you two oh, folks. Absolutely. Because, and when I watch you two, and I've been with 10,000 ministers, 10,000 have sponsored my crusades. There's something so genuine about the two of you. And I love the way you read the scriptures. It always moves my heart. Yes, that is Jan's little gift. Well, I guess I, what I guess what I, my special ministry is these days is not only a builder of the wall and a builder of Christian TV stations, but I hope maybe a, a slayer of some sacred cows and some old religious traditions and denominations. Absolutely. These walls have got to come down just like the Berlin Wall came down and the bamboo curtain is coming down. Yeah. We've got to see that happen because, hey, I happen to believe this book that says when Jesus comes, he's going to present to his heavenly Father a beautiful bride without spot and without wrinkle, without any blemish. Can you imagine brides and bridesmaids at a Not wedding just along. punching <laughs> each other's lights out, you know? And, and, you know, hey, what kind of a wedding would that be? And the bride... You know, and the and the flower girl beating up on the ring bearer, and you know all that. You know, what a mess! What a mess! I'd get out of that wedding, uh, wouldn't you? I wouldn't want to hang around. You know, we're we're one body. First Corinthians 12. We're one bride. Ephesians 5:25 to 27. We're one family. John 1:12. We're one citizenry, Ephesians 3.20, Ephesians 2.19. And as soon as we get to the other side, God says, all right, now I'm going to make you love one another. Mm. The rapture comes. Come up hither, Revelation 4.1. And then we have to start loving one another. Yeah. How raw. Right. Oh, religion yes. produces nothing but evil. Every yes. time the word religion appears in the Bible, it's connected with evil, evil. with one exception, James 1.26. And then he says, pure religion. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking the other day, how sad that right at this present moment that Arab brothers are going against one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've got two main denominations, the Sunnis and the Shiites. And Iran, of course, is the Shiites. And uh, Iraq was the Sunnis. And they murdered a million of their own mm -hmm. in a war. And they call it Holy Jihad, war. Oh. But we've got the same thing in our, our groups. Yes. If we have a different label, we hate one another. Yeah. It's not Christianity. 
we know we've passed from death unto life because we love the brothers. Mm. And whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. Mm. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. First John 3, 15. Who's my brother? Jesus said, Whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother. Matthew 12, 15. You know what? I've got a, I've got a, a theory, a little yeah. private theory. And by the way, get your Bibles out. This last hour, we're going to get into the Middle East. Let's have one more song before we really, really get our books and notepads out. Do you remember, I know you do, you, the walking Bible here. I mean, you've, have you memorized the whole Bible now or at least uh, a good share? I've memorized 10,000 verses. And right now, Rexel and our daily devotions are reading the Old Testament through again, and I'm marking every verse I still want to commit to memory, and I think I'll have another th three to four thousand, for a total of fourteen thousand. What, what percentage of the Bible would that be? Do you have any well, idea, roughly? 7,800 verses in the New Testament. 7,800 So that verses. gives you a comparison. How many are the old? Well, I'll bet you can quote this one. Where, where is that scripture <laughs> yeah. that says... It's got to be in the New. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Well. When we get to heaven and we're at that judgment bema seat of Christ, there is silence in heaven for the space of, is it one 30, hour? 30 minutes. 30 minutes. It's in Revelation. Oh, yeah, well, we're at the Bema seat in 2 Corinthians 5, 10, Romans 14, 10, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 15 and 16. But that, I believe, is Revelation 8, 1. Mm -hmm. 8, 1. I think it's Why? 8, 1. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Read it from the living. When the Lamb had broken the seventh seal, there was silence throughout all heaven for what seemed like half an hour, the Living Bible says. Paul, Half an hour. remember uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not column? Mm. Yes. When I was just a kid, he actually ran this article. He said, will there be ladies in heaven? Answer tomorrow. And he put in Revelation 8.1. <laughs> he said, no, there was silence in heaven for the space of a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for blaming that on Ripley. And not in, no, here's my theory. I think this could be all wet, but anyhow, this is a thought. Think about it. When we get to heaven and the books are opened and we really see who all made it, <laughs> made it and, and yeah. what the motive of Paul Crouch's right. heart was and why he worked to build TV stations and yeah. why Jack Van Impey worked hard to produce a program to touch, when we really see and know and understand the truth, I think there's going to be stunned silence oh. even in oh. heaven as we realize who do you know who the heroes are going to be let me tell you something a little lady just passed away and she left her entire little estate to Trinity right. didn't amount to much a little bank account a little three room apartment with some old furniture in it and just knickknacks and little bric-a-brac and stuff you know but we look back through the record, and she was living like a pauper. Mm. Last year, she donated over $20,000 to Christian television. The year before, $15,000. She left a, a little in our trust account right. here. The whole amount came to Trinity. But when they went to pick up her little furniture, mm. it's so pitiful. A little old tattered couch, a little old table, and four chairs, a, a little old, old bedroom set. And she could, she had the money, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah. she gave it to, to, the Lord. to the Lord and yeah. to build these stations. I want to tell you, it's going to be people like that are going to be sitting up at the head table right. Right. with Jesus. And That's when right. we get there, boy, I mean, I think when the books are really opened. Now, I'm, I'm not talking about the sinners. God's going to take care of them and they're going to get cast out, you know, with the devil and his angels. But I'm talking about the body now, the family. I think there's going to be some stunned silence even in heaven when we really see who did what and why and oh, yeah. who did the job. Well, that's uh, 1 John 2.28, speaking to believers, little children abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. It starts with his appearing, the verse ends with his coming, and it says there'll be two groups, the confident and the ashamed. Not only will he judge our works, but the motives. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the consuls, or Greek, the motives of the heart. And a lot of folks don't realize that 
Revelation 21.4 states, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, that this is after the millennium. He rules and reigns for 1,000 years in chapter 20, verse 4, and in chapter 21, verse 4, he's wiping away the tears. Because after we meet him, and this judgment takes place for service, mm -hmm, see, mm -hmm. therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and make uh, manifest the motives of the heart, that there's going to be weeping. Not constantly, but spasmodically, intermittently, as people realize they've wasted their lives. And for 1,007 years, the seven-year tribulation period and the millennium, there'll be times when they're still weeping about that what they could have done for Christ and didn't do, and he wipes Ooh. away the tears and says, from this point onward, there's no more weeping. Whoa, right. I'd never thought about that. I thought the wiping away of tears was at the end of no. the tribulation the, the, when the, Jesus returned. No, the book of Revelation is written chronologically. Write the things which thou hast seen, the things which are, and the things which shall be. Things which thou hast seen, uh, chapter 1. The things which are, chapters 2 and 3. The things which shall be, chapters 4 to 22. And chapters 6 to 18 cover the a seven-year period of tribulation. Chapter 19, he comes as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, verse 16. Chapter 20, verse 4, he rules and reigns for 1,000 years. And then chapter 21 is after the 1,000 years. God shall wipe away all tears from your eyes. Yeah. We just got a short course and in this little lady, And this little lady That's right. is really going to be blessed because... Jesus said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Matthew Isn't 6, she 19. already, oh, though? Lord. She's there with yeah, Jesus. Right. Yeah. He's already yeah. loving her. That's right. Yeah. My, well, my husband's father, you know, yeah. just had surgery. And by the way, I want to say thank you for praying. Trinity family, thank you for praying. And he had heart surgery. You sent him the most beautiful array of flowers. It just filled his room and how we appreciated it. But um, I, someone sent to us and we have taken it to his hospital room, and he, it's right there. The most beautiful painting of the Lord, embracing a man in the clouds, taking him home in death, mm. saying, Welcome home. Mm. Whoa. Uh -huh. Isn't that beautiful? Uh -huh. It's the most beautiful picture I think I've ever seen. That little lady, I'm sure, mm -hmm. has had the embrace of Jesus yeah, Christ, absolutely. and he said, Welcome home. Welcome home. She's been rewarded partially. Her treasure is secure. Mm. Yes. It really is. Hey. We've got to hurry now. We've got a, what, the, the better part of an hour, hour. <laughs> the better part of an hour to solve all the problems over in <laughs> Iraq and the Middle East and Jordan and Israel and whatever. Get your Bibles out. Let's sing one more song and get ready to go. We're going to really get into it now. The song says, try a little kindness, Good. body of Christ. <laughs> Good. Let's do it right now. As Harold Quartet sings it. If you see your brother standing by the road With a heavy load from the seeds he sowed And if you see your sister falling by the way Just stop and say, you're going the wrong way You've got to try a little kindness Yes, show a little kindness Just shine your light for everyone to see and if you try a little kindness, then you'll overlook the blindness of narrow-minded people on the narrow-minded street. Don't walk around the down and down, lend a helping hand instead of down. And the kindness that you show every day, show it every day. Along his way, you've got to try a little kindness. Yes, show a little kindness. Just shine your light for everyone to see. And if you try a little kindness, then you'll overlook the blindness of narrow-minded people on the narrow-minded street. You've got to.
little sermons in song. That's Thank great, guys. You. Thank you, Harold's Quartet. We'll what try we to turn? squeeze one more in. Let me just start real quickly by saying, you know, when all of this trouble has broken in the Middle East, Jack, why, um, you know, here we go. It's a field day again for all the prophecy pundits, and, and uh, I've heard all kinds of bizarre theories already. You know, I mean, is yeah. Hussein the Antichrist? And mm -hmm. I, first of all, I don't think anybody's going to follow that madman over there. He's not a man of peace. He's a man of war. Um, you know, who would, who would follow him in a political sense, in, on a world scale at least? And, and other things. So what I really respect about you, Jack, is that you do your homework, you really dig it out, and, and I know you've got some thoughts. Let's start by, let, let, let me just get, get us started this way. In all of the turmoil that's occurred now in the last, mm -hmm. what, few weeks when, since Hussein five invaded weeks. Iraq, uh, Kuwait, about five weeks, is, is, is anything really crystallizing that, that you can, with some confidence, fit in to the scriptural pattern here? I think some of the greatest scholars, prophetically speaking, happen to be Dr. Walford yes. and Dr. Dwight Pentecost, and they speak about a number of small skirmishes, minor battles before Armageddon, or they even call these battles within the entire uh, mm -hmm. subject. Mm -hmm covering Armageddon. But uh, I've repeatedly said the last six weeks on our program on TBN that this is not it because the alignment of the nations are not what Ezekiel tells us uh, will mm -hmm. occur at the time. Mm -hmm. And the thing that really shocks me, however, is that the final scourge on this earth will come out of Iraq. This right. isn't the time, but we're getting ready. I can we find say, that in Scripture? Oh in a yes. Uh -huh. uh, really? Let me just show the people this world globe first. Okay. All right. And uh, here, here is are. Iraq. Iraq is the and, yeah. uh, Baghdad is right there, and it's not on this map, but it's on their maps at home if they look at a world atlas. Uh, maybe 30, 40 miles left of Baghdad okay. is the Euphrates River. Mm -hmm. All right. Revelation 9:14. Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. The angels were loose to slay a third part of man, mankind. Whoa. That's the only place in the world. It's right there. That's so the, so the final river. destruction on the world literally comes out of it's, this. It's going to come country. out of uh, that country. Whoo. I, I, I've now read that's that. That's too scary. That, that really yeah. If you want to read that, that uh, I, I Revelation 9 14. Yeah. That. I mean, tell me, what, is this that, not the beginning of the end? Then, this Jack? is the beginning, but it can go on for, you know, six, eight to ten years. Really? And then the nations will realign themselves according to Ezekiel 38 and 39. Uh, Rosh, Magog, Tubal come from the north, Ezekiel 38, 15, against Israel. That's the key to the whole situation is the invasion of Israel in the future. Did, did you know what I heard just today? from a very reliable source. <laughs> I'll start using some of the tactics of the secular media. <laughs> yeah. um, and this comes from a, a brother that has just returned from Israel mm -hmm. and is very knowledgeable. He is a Jewish brother. He said that the Israeli Mossad, which is like their CIA, mm -hmm. which by the way is some of the best intelligence gathering people in the world, as you well know. Right are really concerned by an ominous trend right now in that their counterpart in Iraq, I, I don't know what they call them, their secret service, is infiltrating in large numbers Jordan. Mm -hmm. And the concern is that they're trying to destabilize King Hussein of Jordan and overthrow his regime so that they would then have a border mm -hmm. right on Israel. Now you heard Hussein, the butcher of Baghdad now, right. you heard him say, Israel, you pull out of the West Bank and we'll consider withdrawing from Kuwait. I, I still, in my bones, man, it's not over oil, it's not over anything, it's, it's, over, it's Israel. over Israel, isn't Definitely. it? That's, that's the linchpin of the whole thing, right. isn't it? Uh, Seventeen times 
in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 for the battle of the latter years and the latter days, chapter 38, verses 8 and 16. They come from the north, verse 15, against Israel. Uh, 38, 8, against the mountains of Israel. Verse 16, thou shalt come up against my people of Israel. Verse 19, surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. Chapter 39, verse 4, thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel. Verse 12, seven months shall the house of Israel be bearing of them. It's Israel, and the oil thing is not the big deal. So we pay 25 cents more a gallon. Right now in Italy, they're paying $4.81 yeah. a gallon, $75 yes. to fill up a tank. Much of the rest of the world, yes. And we're only uh, receiving 7% of our oil from that part of the world. Europe is receiving 24%. That's just subterfuge and camouflage. It's Israel, and they're getting ready for Israel. But on um, 60 Minutes, Moshe Ahrens was being interviewed. And he said, Defense. Saddam Hussein made the biggest mistake of his lifetime by making the move five years too soon. And I am predicting it's going to happen in 1996. What is? When they make the push to Israel. Into Israel. They may have a minor war now. Mm -hmm. uh, all the headlines I'm picking up for this week's program, and I want our folks watching now to be sure to tune in to the programs for the next two weeks. Uh, indicate that everything is getting ready. We're just placing the checkers on the board now for 1996. And the reason being in now, 19... Now, 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 wait a minute. Let's be sure we understand what you're talking about. You're talking about that, that great invasion into Israel by the powers of the north. Yes. When, when Ezekiel 38, says, 39. Yes. And that's, of course, tied in with Revelation 9 and 14, when God says, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates, right there. Which flows right through Iraq. Yeah, right I through Iraq. That's on my yeah. To slay a third part of mankind. Yeah. And how does he do it? Verse 16, the number of the army was 200,000, 200 million. Revelation 16, 12 says they're coming from the east over the Euphrates. The sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, so that the way of the kings of the east, the oriental leaders, uh, might be prepared as they march toward Israel. Jack. Do you know wow. what? That's you know an what important I, spot. You know what I think this, this whole thing with the Iraq and Kuwait is all about? We were talking about it on our program. I believe there was such solidarity among the Arab nations. Nothing could, could uh, they were up. invincible yeah. as uh -huh. far as being their brotherhood was mm -hmm. concerned. Something had to happen yeah. to cause a schism within the Arab world. Mm -hmm. Why? So the invasion the, of Kuwait. Yeah, a brother taking because, over a brother's domain. Right, a brother domain. taking over. Yeah. The invasion yeah. of Kuwait caused Saudi Arabia to say, hey, yeah. you're going to try to take us over too, mm -hmm. because Saudi Arabia will not go in with them but, when it but, comes to the invasion Israel. of Israel. But See, wait a minute. I thought, I thought before that great push into Israel that there would be a solid confederation of the yeah. Arab that states not not joined Saudi Iraq. Arabia. Yeah, I've, right. been, I've been preaching uh, the coming Saudi war with Russia That's for right. 40 years now. I just put out this new videotape on Russia, uh, Russia, World War III, and Armageddon. And I've always said, you can go back in my book that's now 30-some years old, <laughs> Sheba and Deedon mm -hmm. are Arab nations who will not be in the coalition mm -hmm. of the Arab yes. Federation. Mm -hmm. Dr. Stuart and, McBurney yeah, has And touched. Sheba yeah. and Deedon are the, the Saudi areas Arabia. right now. Yeah. Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. will not yeah. join yeah. I always said it would be right. Saudi Arabia. Yeah, and in fact, Dr. McBurney's yeah. done a great study on that because they say, Art thou come mm -hmm. to take a spoil? Mm -hmm. uh, Sheba, Tarshish, no Deden, Sh Tarshish Sheba. and all the young lions. What which is the lineup when, when the great... I mean, okay. if we see the lineup, right. we'll know that that's oh, it. Okay, this exactly. will take me a minute. Yeah. Um, there are four kings, and that's just a genetic term, four world leaders. Mm -hmm. There is the King of the West, Revelation 13, 1, which I believe is common market. And the Antichrist will come out of that grouping of nations. And we were saying a while ago, why no revival in our country and in the Western world? Why is there such a declension? Because we are going to produce the Antichrist. The West. Mm -hmm. Not Iraq, the West. Yeah. Okay, he comes great. out of common market. I saw the beast mm -hmm. rise up out of the Sea of Nations having seven heads and ten horns. And you know, mm -hmm. uh, I've explained that so often. The ten horns are ten kings that shall arise. Yes. Uh, Daniel 7, 24. 
And that's the West. Then there is the king. Now we're talking about the confederation of nations at, that at will the time arise when this happens. When we'll know, yeah. as Jan has been asking, right. that it's really here. All right. Okay. Then there's the king of the North, which is the Soviet Union, now called Russia. I never did say it would be the Soviet Union, because that's 15 different nations Moldavia and Estonia, Latvia. Lithuania oh, it doesn't is. have to be part of that. When you study Ezekiel 38 and 39, all it mentions is Rush, Rush, Russia, Russia, and Georgia, from which Stalin came. Yeah. It's only those two nations that are involved in that push Rush against. And so all the other 13 could secede. It wouldn't matter. They're not part of that prophecy. It was never the coming war with the Soviet Union, Ooh. but the coming war with Russia. Right. So the king of the north, and that's the terms, of course, Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Harash. All right? Uh, aligned with them are many of the Arab nations. Uh, Persia changed its name in 1932 to Iran and Iraq. Oh, the old Persian Gulf took in Mesopotamia and Persia. Mesopotamia became Iraq and uh, Persia became Iran, but the two were the Persian Gulf nations. Mm -hmm. They're with the Soviet bloc. So as we see Russia now and America getting together next week, and America now saying we will give economic aid to the Soviet Union if you will pull your advisors out of Iraq and we're offering Jordan money and we're going to give seven billion dollars to Egypt it, it's the wrong thing it's the wrong thing to do mm -hmm, but I'm mm -hmm. not the president of the United States of America but I am a Bible student mm -hmm. all right uh, Ethiopia Libya is some of the Sudan uh, we have Gomer and all his bands the reunification of Germany going along with Russia for the greatest anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish purge in history. Tagarma is Turkey, and H-A-I-K, Hike, left Tagarma and fathered the people of Syria. So they're all part of this with Russia. I see so it. So I see the, it. The alignment's wrong it's right not now. Because yeah. Germany is just now reuniting, yeah. but they're still October not 3rd. really with Russia. No, not no, no. Not at all. No. Not at all. And, and Russia's with us right now, see? Right. So it's, it's the wrong alignment. And, and Turkey's still yeah. in NATO. They're still with mm -hmm. the West. Yeah. So it's, it's a future time yeah. when Russia and Germany... Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got two kings so far. The king of the West, the Antichrist, the king of the North, Russia, with all these Arabs aligned with him. And of course, Saudi Arabia, Sheba and Dedan aligned with the West. And as it's being formed now and formulated, this is it. So what you're saying is a lot mm -hmm. of the pieces yeah. are falling into place, but a few aren't uh -huh. yet in And them. it'll be... Is e that it? Yes. And Egypt will be the leader of the other Arab confederation with the Soviet Union, not Saddam Hussein, because at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at Israel and the king of the north. Daniel 11:40, and then you got the king of the east. Tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble the leader of the west, the Antichrist. Yeah, the Daniel 11:44, and that's when they come across the Euphrates. Revelation 16:12, in this eastern block of nations. And now here is Japan and Russia getting together in the next week to Ooh, settle differences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we're seeing right now is the putting of the final. Okay. pieces of the puzzle into place for what I believe will happen around 96. No, uh -huh. I didn't get through with what I said a moment ago. <laughs> yeah. On 60 Minutes, Masha Aaron yeah. says he's made his mistake yeah. because the Israelis went yeah. in and destroyed his nuclear reactors in 81. Mm -hmm. If that hadn't happened, we'd be in trouble tonight because yeah. Saddam Hussein would have nitrogen or uh, hydrogen, hydrogen bombs. bombs. Mm -hmm. Atomic bombs. But he probably will have them again in within five years, say, and he says, then you'd be invincible, unstoppable, but on the same program, an Israeli defector, that super intelligent spy agency you mentioned, mm -hmm. went to London and sold the secrets of the Israeli government to the London Times, and they said that the Israelis have hydrogen bombs mm -hmm. so plentiful that they can wipe every Arab nation off the earth instantaneously. So this is not we, the time. Israel's ready. She has her gas We've mask known for a long hands. time that Israel was but ready. But the others aren't. So th this is just getting it ready. For okay, what, what's going to happen to Hussein? Well, you know, I was saying on last week's program in Daniel 5, Belshazzar. Rex, you have that article there. Uh, he claims to be the present-day Belshazzar. 
Oh, really? Of Babylon, yes. Oh. Today's Los Angeles, Angeles paper. Here it is. Yeah, Here it is. You can get a the new king of Babylon. Were, if I were picking a this king, I, I, I wouldn't pick Belshazzar. I All think right. I'd pick somebody right. else. The new king of Babylon. Get a close-up of this. The new king of Babylon, question mark. There he is. The first Belshazzar put on this great party. The wine was flowing like water. He took the vessels out of the temple of God into which to pour his alcoholic beverages blaspheming the name of God, and their handwriting appeared on the wall. Many, many tekel a parson. Many, many is numbered, numbered. Tekel means weighed in the balances and found wanting, and a parson is the plural of divided. And the Medes and the Persians attacked and destroyed him, and in that night was Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, slain. Uh, Daniel 5.31, and the New York Times just came out and said this could happen to the second Belshazzar. <laughs> yeah, do you really think that Hussein will have to be taken off the scene before we can really have the configurations of the nations that the Bible predicts before it all really finishes up? Uh, I, I don't think it really matters because according to the latest news releases, his uh, generals under him are just as fanatical. Right. And if he's taken off the scene, they'll just take over for the holy jihad, holy war. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of Arabs realize that this is not a holy war presently, see? Yeah. And they know that Israel's ready and they're not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when it comes, loose the angels in the Euphrates to yeah. slay a third part of mankind. See? Now, back for a moment. Why 1996? Because... Now, now, hold it right here for a second. We're not saying the Lord is coming in 1996. No, 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 no. This is not the rapture. No. This is not the second no. coming. You're predicting that 1996 Blinded. looks like the year right. of the invasion into Israel. Uh, yes, right? very that? definitely. Okay. And uh, one of the reasons is because the Department of Defense in the United States of America, headed up by Cheney, says that he believes that Russia will be ready to invade that part of the world in 96. And that perestroika and glassness is failing. Yeah. Yeah. fake. And Hal Lindsey said something last yeah. night very interesting. He said exactly the same thing you did, that Hussein jumped the gun. And, and caught the Russians off guard even. They're, he's kind of their client right. down here. The Russians don't want to blow their connection with the right. West to aid yeah. their economic recovery over the next few years. They're not ready, are they, no. for, for Ezekiel 38 and 39? No. And then there are those who believe that this war with Rosh is in the middle of the tribulation hour because she goes against the land of unwalled villages to them that are at rest, Ezekiel 38, 11. And since Israel became a nation in 48, she has never been at rest. But this world leader out of the common market nations will get Israel and the other nations to sign this peace contract, which lasts for 42 months. Mm -hmm. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And the Hebrew word there is heptad. Mm -hmm. And heptad is always seven years. Seven. And in the midst of the heptad, three and a half years, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. So. I'm, I'm looking for some world leader to rise very soon. Okay. Do you, uh, there are many different opinions on this, uh, and I don't know if I've ever really pinned you down on whether you're pre, mid, or post. When do you believe the church will be well, Since I was up? with you last time, I'm pan. Everything will pan <laughs> out all right. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you taught me something new. That's the safest one, isn't it? Yeah. Non-pre. <laughs> you believe that the church will go first, yes. and then these awful events predicted in right. Revelation. Uh, when when Iraq invaded Kuwait, I looked at Jack and I said, are you sure? <laughs> this looks like it's really getting hot here and that the checkers are going into place. But I really, uh, it struck me so very, very much that something had to happen in the Arab world to bring that schism. Yeah. What else could have done it yeah. but had they not invaded their own? Of course, uh -huh. of course, the Arabs have been fighting amongst themselves. You know, I mean, but Iraq and Iran have just ended an eight-year bloody war. So, but you know. True, but the, the world wasn't in it. Yeah. Now, our president, I believe, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, has brought the world into it. I mean, we've never had the world in, uh, really, we've talked about World War I, World War II. It's not been like this. There were just yeah. Europeans involved in World War I, mm -hmm. World War II, we and the Japanese and Europe, but not Asia yeah. and Russia. The whole world is involved yeah. in this one. Yeah. Yeah. No, and uh, Zechariah 12, too, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling to all people, mm -hmm. and then I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone, stone for all people. Verse 4, and then Zechariah 14, verse 2, I'll gather 
all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Yeah. Not, all not Iraq. All this nations. is the stepping stone now for what I believe will be around 1996. Mm. A fellow said the other night, he said, I watched your program, it scared me to death. I said, why? On the news, they're telling you anything can happen any moment. I'm telling you, we've got a reprieve till 96. <laughs> I can build a lot of stations between now and 1996. We could have a, a limited war there. Let me ask you one. Always, everybody wants to know, okay, what about good old America? How, do we fit in anywhere in this yeah, that's, puzzle? Yeah, that's my new uh, album Video. right there. Ooh, American, American Prophecy. Prophecy. Mm. Give me just a little... They can get our address through the TBN program. Well, no, we'll Mondays, put it up Wednesdays. here in just a minute. Uh, World, Russia, World War III and Armageddon, America in Prophecy, the 90s, Startling End Time Signs, and Your Future. That one's not even out yet. Oh, this one's... No, okay, well, no. folks the, and, can write... And those are loaded with graphics, like 110, 115 graphics backing up mm. everything with maps, with pictures, and... We've really put a lot the of work 90s? into it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I want that. That, that isn't even released yet. They can't get the 90s for two more weeks. We don't even have... You can have that's our, that. We'll let oh, you have the we'll first have copy of it. Is that, is that really a, a real tape, or, uh, or is this just a no. dummy? No, that's a real one. Yeah, yeah, okay. That isn't the one with the labels on it yet, though. But I just wanted to be able to hold it up in front of the is people. That not the complete but that one? deals with end-time terminology, end-time numerology, end-time mm. Israel, end-time Europe. Uh, end time world conditions, end time leaders, end time organizations, new age movement, and end time space spectaculars, ending with the rapture. Okay, the, your address is on the screen. Yeah. Those of you who want to get in touch with Jack and Rexella, just drop them a note. They'll give you information on all of their materials. But, but give, give, me, okay. give me just a little tiny tease. Mm -hmm. What about America? Yeah. Where, where do we fit in? Uh, I, yes, I believe that we are the Babylon of Isaiah 18.1, Jeremiah chapter 50, 51, and Revelation 18, Rex. I, I want to give her, have her give you some of these headlines when I get through with this little section here. Yeah, if, let me just say this. If you don't think we are living in the last days, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I'm, I read the newspapers yeah. pretty much, and I watch network news mm -hmm. quite often. I, I couldn't believe some of this. The, the, the proof is here. Now, these no. are the articles we collected in just the last four weeks to be used on TBN two weeks from now, not next yeah. week's program, the okay. second week. Okay. Right. You had your little grandbaby here a okay. moment ago. This first one will no, break. Uh, no, break. I, I want to uh, build this first and then show them how this fits in. What, okay. Did you want this? All yeah. of it, yeah. Okay. No, in just one second. Oh, all right. yeah. Just a minute. In Jeremiah chapter 50, there is an amalgamation of nations that attack Babylon from the north. Old Babylon, Iraq, was attacked by the Medes and the Persians from the east. And that's it, period. This is happening at the end time from the north, and Israel is not only north, uh, uh, Russia is not only north of Israel, but north of the United States of America as well. Uh, verse 11, she is a superpower that's the hindermost of the nations. She came into existence as one of the latent or last nations. And of course, 1776, we're just a baby compared to the other nations of the world, China and Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, then in verse um, 19, she becomes a superpower when Israel is in her land, which never happened for 2,500 years till 1948. Verse 31, she had been proud against the Lord. Verse 37, she's a nation of mingled people. Uh, Russia has 15 different nationalities and probably ethnic groups within those, but we have every race on earth living. Yeah, we're the melting pot of the world. In America, this yeah. is the mingled people. In chapter 51, uh, verse 9, uh, she had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand, prosperity galore. Verse 13, she dwells upon many waters. We have the Pacific, the Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico, and four major rivers. And then, of course, in verse 58, she mounts up to heaven. A space spectacular a program that's Whoa, wait a minute. Where is this? Uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 50, 51, 50 and 50. Chapters 50 and 51, but the space spectacular is chapter 51, verse 53. She mounts up to heaven. Whoa. Like old Babylon when they tried to build a tower of Babel, see? Now... Well, what Before does that prophecy go on to say? What happens to this <laughs> nation? <laughs> oh, that she's, she's going to suffer the judgment of God. Yeah. We are in for it. This time, we're going to get it. We didn't in World War I, World War II on the home 
turf. But we are this time. And here's the reason. Her sins have reached unto heaven, Revelation 18.5. But, Paul, think of New York City in the light of this, and Los Angeles and all these places. I mean, we have four times as many murders in Christian America as they do in any other nation on earth. Something's wrong. One out of four teenagers are bearing illegitimate children. Uh, the, uh, last night on television, one out of every five, six college girls is date raped. One out of every six college girls gets raped on her dates by the guys. Mm. I mean, this is a sick, sick nation. Millions of drug addicts, millions of people committing fornication and homosexual, name it. And she's going to give you just the headlines of the last four weeks. But listen to Revelation 18.2. Um, Babylon, oh Babylon the great has fallen and has become the habitation of demons and of every foul spirit and a cage full of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, in the light of, just give us the headlines on all these subjects in the last four weeks in America. A cage okay. full of unclean and hateful birds. Okay. Uh, this will really hurt your heart. Jan, you had your little grandbaby mm. in here earlier tonight. Teenager charged with shooting toddler to death and wounding the sister because the little baby wet his pants. Oh, you know, Jesus. he had to shoot him. Father faces charge in hot water burning of son. They put in Detroit a little boy. He scalded him again because he wouldn't stop crying. Two spectators are slain by gunmen in drag racing car. Ooh, Fear second. grips Florida campus, you know, because yeah. of all these slangs down there. Homicides heading for a record year here in the United States. It's not getting better, it's getting worse. Pontiac men charged with burying six puppies alive simply because they were whining, you know. Just craziness. Isn't yeah, it? craziness. I mean, it's just evil. Uh, well, evil. I think, you know, the it's demons. absolutely skinheads gaining could ground. Think of yeah. stuff like foul spirits, burying Revelation 18 too. puppies. I burying mean, puppies. Well, they were re they uh, four of them did live of the five and they're, they're not ado adopted out. Skinheads gaining ground in Oakland, California. And Arbor okay's $5 fine for abortion. They're going to have abortion so it's, you know, but they're going to be fined five dollars every time they kill a baby. A way to skirt the law. Exactly, that's uh, what they're going to do. Yes, yes. Louisiana Governor vetoes tough abortion bill. You know when that came up in yeah. Louisiana just lately. Local experts alarmed by increase of child abuse. You know we just wrote a little book on that, Jan, that I sent to you. Mm -hmm. A couple tells of selling baby for a pint and a rock. That little baby was rescued by someone. Pint of liquor and uh, yeah. a rock. They uh, sold their cocaine. baby. Mm -hmm. Abuse of elderly is growing in the United States, and of course we know about euthanasia, this about is the five weeks euthanasia. Of the doctors Watson, oh, all this. doctors Watson and Crick, I'm telling on here, documentation that they're advertising, adv uh, advocating compulsory death for anyone who turns 80. You're mm -hmm. gone at 80. 80 yeah. is it. 80 is it. Euthanasia. The suicide machine, you know, Dr. Kevorkian from Michigan mm -hmm. and right where we're living, uh, they've perfor been performing suicides. He has this machine now and you can fly there. It's illegal. Well, no suicide machine, so they, they have now banned that from Michigan. And uh, the problem of teenage pregnancies, Jack already talked about that. One in four births now in the United States are out of wedlock. One in four. One. A couple more of these. She says Woman says to. that you, you remember the Archbishop who just was put out of the Roman Catholic Church? She uh, talks about her affair with him. Gay men and lesbian couples have been ordained lately in mm -hmm. uh, many of the churches. Networks increase sex, violence, profanity. Top sponsors are contracted. And this for next one. Oof. Art display profanes Christ. This is why. All right. The National Endowment for the Arts gave artist John Fleck $5,000 last year to help fund a performance in which he urinated on a photo of Christ. So our tax dollars went to this man to perform that act of urinating on a photo of Christ. The streets are filled with coke. One in 100 are now in the United States addicted to coke. Every one in 100. Tobacco firm exports death, the AMA says. One in four road fatalities are linked to coke. One in ten will die from tobacco, or 500 million. That's the World Health Organization's report. AIDS is nothing next to tobacco. One out of ten will die from tobacco. 
worldwide. Oh, brother. The pilots that were just on, on trial because they were drinking be while they were flying, pilot tells jury a pre-flight partying. Poor folks make their own moonshine with Lysol. And I, my heart is really burdened for Kitty Dukakis. We should really pray for that dear lady because it's being feared now that she's out of control. She's been drinking Nail all kinds polish. of things. Nail polish. Anything mm -hmm. she get her hands on. Mm -hmm. So she does need prayer. SNL scandal. We all know about that. Oh, yeah. It goes on and on. Well, Atheists right. atheist ask for Bible warnings. Mm -hmm. Now, you know about the Gideon Bibles in the hotels, the atheists are asking for a warning label to be printed, and the warning will say this, that uh, if you take this literally, it may endanger your health and life. That's what they want in the Gideon Oh, they want Bibles. a warning sticker a warning on the, the Holy Bibles. Bible. Uh-huh. If you take it literally, it could endanger... In all the hotels, Gideon Bibles. You know... This is just this four is, weeks. Oh, yeah. And geez. this goes on daily. This is so We're serious, in for trouble. isn't it? It's and you know, the world attacks us, the Christian yeah. networks, the Christian radio, the pastors, as being evil mm -hmm. exactly. and doing things that are going to destroy their choice and their being able to live the life they when want to live. When we have when the only answer. Not us. Yeah. The Bible has well, the only answer. we have answer. it in this word, yes. Yeah. Jesus. It does. That's exactly right. If you right. were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I've chosen yeah, out of the world, worse. therefore the world hates you, and Jan's going to get worse because uh, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus yes. and for the word of God. Revelation Do you really 20, believe, Jack, you know, that, that Christians are going to see some serious persecution here oh, in the United States? Yes, I believe States. we could see some before the rapture, definitely. I, yeah. I, and it's moving quickly. I feel it. And that's why judgment is coming on the country I love. You know, we talk about Christian America, but four times as many murders as any other country. One in four babies born out of wedlock. And 50 percent of those church kids, they come to a rally and go out and have sex after the rally. But you really, you really personally believe we've got maybe five or six more years. Yes. Before it re all the hell big, the big really thing. breaks. The alignment loose. of the nations now is totally out of harmony with the Word of God. And I wish but we they're had, going to fall into place. I wish we had more time for you to really pinpoint specifically from Scripture why, because I know you've got many other reasons. He does but, on his program. But I accept so that, and, and, and yes, be sure and catch Jack's program. Every Maybe the next six years you ought to do a daily, Brother Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I... Yeah. The study that you two do is, I, I just run to the television when you know, I know your time is on. I often said, God, Won't why did it? I memorize those 10,000 yes. verses? It took me 17 years to do it, all by subjects. And you, when I prepare these programs, I, I look at the papers daily, and I, the verses click as I see the headlines. I understand. I don't look for headlines to go with verses. God gives me the verses, bring them to my mind as I see the headlines. And that's how we prepare the programs. Well, let me just summarize it all by saying some of you out there are still laughing. You're still scoffing. You don't believe a word that we're saying tonight. Did you know, if you look honestly in this word, you yourself tonight are one of the Second main Peter. proofs in Second Peter. It talks about in the last days there will come scoffers, mockers, people who will say this whole thing is a bunch of baloney. It's a phony baloney. You are yourself tonight one of the proofs to me that we are very near to the coming of Christ. These headlines prove it even more. The alignment of the nations, the signs in the heavens, the, uh, dear God, if we had time yet tonight, signs in the earth. Did you know they're still scratching their heads about these huge circles that are just appearing mysteriously? In, in they set up Europe. cameras to try to catch 50 scientists were there in London yeah. for a week. And they cannot yeah. figure out where But what they coming. did find is when they stand in the area where the circles have been made, there's strange vibrations emitting from the ground that they have never experienced before. Signs 50, in the earth. 50 in the scientists earth. from 50 nations were there. And they can't figure it out. Can't hey, it out. hey, it's, you've heard this old saying, it's not a cliche anymore. It is later than you think. We have prayer pray. partners here. Let's pray, and they'll talk with you and pray with you and love you. Say this simple prayer and mean it with all your heart. Oh, God, I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I need a Savior. Come into my heart. Lord, 
Jesus. Be my Savior now and forevermore. I want to be ready when you come. Mm -hmm. And when all of this dispensation comes to a climactic close, help us, God. Help your people now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me read a scripture, honey. And he did not spare any of the people who lived in ancient times before the flood except Noah, the one man who spoke up for God and his family of seven. At that time, God completely destroyed the whole world of ungodly men with a vast flood. Later, he turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into heaps of ashes and blotted them off the face of the earth, making them an example for all the ungodly in the future to look back upon and fear. Mm. At the same time, the Lord rescued Lot out of Sodom because he was a good man, sick of the terrible wickedness he saw everywhere around him from day to day. So also the Lord can rescue you and me from the temptations that surround us and continue to punish the ungodly until the day a final judgment comes. Second Peter 2, read it for yourself. Watch Jack and Rexella's program, as I said. The blood every, of Jesus can help you every, escape. <laughs> every Monday at 10 p.m. and every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. California time. I want this tape. Put their address up again. Yeah, those of you that want to get in 90s. touch with Jack and Rexella. Put their address up there. Jot this address down and oh. they'll be happy, I'm sure, to give you information on the many materials. Didn't even mention the big, beautiful, font, colorful map. That comes that, with the uh, uh, Russian video, Russia, World War III and Armageddon. Those are the invasion routes. That's why what's happening now is not that moment, because th this is the way it's going the to be. The configuration right. isn't right yet, is it? Okay. Well, let's, let's do an update again real soon. And uh, especially, be sure and book Jack in 1990. Five. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you, we did those 42 generations the last time I was here. Yeah. I have even new light on that. It comes out in 1999 at Rosh Hashanah. And I'm not setting dates, but it's September. exciting. September. This is Rosh Hashanah month. Uh, even September. so, so come, come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Let's welcome Bob. The trumpets will sound in Israel this month. <laughs> from Buffalo, New York. Just got saved tonight. Lionel from Tucson. Thank Redondo God. from King... Kingston, New York. Thank God. Carl from uh, Los Angeles. Thank Tony you. from Miami, Thank Florida. You. Russell from Potwood, Ohio, Thank wherever you. that is. Los Angeles. Here's a little child, Latina, Thank eight you. years old, oh. coming to Jesus tonight. Yeah. Many more on the phones. Keep calling. Let's say thank you, Jack and Rexella, for thank opening you. the word to us, thank ministering you. to us tonight, to Mario Murillo and the Heralds Quartet, who will take us out in song. We mm -hmm. shall see him as he is. Welcome the Heralds Quartet one more time.
7711. Or in Canada, right? TBN, PO Box 24215, APO, Richmond, British Columbia, B7B, 1Y2. If you would like to contact guests or musicians for their tapes, books, or albums, please write us at TBN and we'll forward your correspondence. If you haven't asked Christ into your life, call our prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now until next time, remember to praise the Lord. Sometimes we feel alone and long to see our Father's face. This program was brought to you by the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.